Tony Facts made it. Tony Facts made it. The crossroads of the postseason and the regular season meet tonight in the north suburbs of Detroit. Two teams that pump out talent and titles come together in unfamiliar territory in search of survival. The 10-time state champion Warriors of Brother Rice are piecing together a postseason push. Key injuries, close losses, and one of the state's toughest schedules makes this battle-tested team's record a bit deceiving. The boys from Bloomfield have a veteran team presence and a bullish line that will look to lead the way. Meanwhile, the green guys from Cast Tech are coming off their biggest win in the rushing era. With no time to celebrate, the three-time state champion technicians have won four straight. It's win or go home for the Avenue boys, and they wouldn't want it any other way. Young stars and seasoned studs have combined to make this late season CT run. Our regular season finale takes us to Bloomfield Hills, where two of the most storied programs in Michigan meet for the first time in 10 years. There is so much to play for in this final sprint to the finish line. And now, live from Bloomfield Hills High School, it's time for the preps coverage of Gridiron Game Day. live at Black Hawk Field, home of the Bloomfield Hills Blackhawks. But today, tonight, on this Friday night, the final week of Gridiron Game Day, we bring you the Cass Tech Technicians and the Brother Rice Warriors. Hello again, everybody. My name is Chad Bush, alongside Sam Stick Day. We are the prep Gridiron Game Day, week nine, and we've got a dandy. And for Cast Tech Stick, coming off a big win over their rival, Martin Luther King, 28 to 14. Yep. And for Country Day, coming off a, a bit of a rival in Country Day and needing a victory, the Warriors get it done. Both teams coming off a win. What a great atmosphere for a Friday night in the final week of Gridiron Game Day. Yeah, and you talk about that game last week for Cast Tech against King. We called it, and Cast Tech, that was a statement win for that program. Their coach, Marshall, after the game was saying, hey, this, we're here. We run Detroit. The rest of the state better take notice. And so, for Brother Rice, they better take notice, and I believe they will tonight. And it's interesting because even though Cast Tech has the winning record and Brother Rice does not, Cast Tech, this is a playoff game for them tonight. They have to win to get into the playoffs. Brother Rice, they're already in even though they're 3-4. and four. But Cast Tech, even though they're sitting 5-3, and three, they got to win this. They do. It's been winner go home for Cast Tech. It's been a playoff game since they lost. Uh, in week three to King in round one against King. They've been playing a playoff game ever since. Mm -hmm. They have to win tonight to get in. If they lose, the system says that they will not make it. Uh, the other side, Brother Rice, is in with a win or a loss despite the three wins thanks to the new strengths of schedule system. Uh, it works well for teams in the Catholic League Central Division like Rice. It's a disaster for teams in the DPSL like Cass and King. Yeah, and that's just the system that we're using from now on, though. So you better get used to it. You better start scheduling some better non-conference games. And, you know, hopefully other athletic directors will play along, too. And that's how you're going to get into the playoffs now. But th that's interesting because when you see the matchup, you see the numbers on the screen. It's like, wait a minute. Cass should have take care of business but this is a formidable brother rice team you know their quarterback who comes into play today setting school records blake morogi he's doing his thing man he's got his arm he's got every tool that you need out of a quarterback and he is he's going to be the guy for brother rice if they're going to get it done today against Cass tech you talk about blake morogi the guy that put up career numbers uh, already this year uh, it's been an up and down year, but this junior, first year starter, uh, had a career game uh, in the matchup he had earlier this year against De La Salle in the upset win. Yeah, he, he definitely took care of business in that game with almost 400 yards, four touchdowns, and he's second all time in passing yards for a game for Brother Rice. So you know he can put it on him, uh, and this is going to be a matchup here uh, in Bloomfield Hills tonight. And then you flip over to the other side of the ball. Yeah, and Labar. Labar is committed to Brown, a guy that was injured 
They moved him to defensive end. He's moved all around. And Labar, a guy for Brother Rice that has been really solid for them. As we step aside here uh, for a moment, we'll come back with a start of tonight's game. The national anthem of the prayer in front of us. We are Gridiron Game Day, week nine. We are the prep. Your dream, your drive, your grit, the heart and vision of every member of your team. We take it all. And from those threads of greatness, we weave a uniform of a champion. In many ways, our sport is just like yours. We've brought together a team of elite designers. We've put in the time and the sweat, perfecting our craft over 14 years. We've outfitted thousands of teams for thousands of victories, approaching each new project, each new game, like it's the only one we'll ever play. And let's be honest, we've done it all with a quality so unmatched that some can't help but call it perfection. You know, it's more than just a shirt. Look like a champion, play like a champion. A champion powered by the G. Hashtag G Brand USA. G Brand USA. Elite design, unmatched quality, American pride. We're proudly made in the USA. You see that? How you can see every delicious speck of sesame, garlic herb, butter cheese? That is what flavored crust should look like. Crust so irresistible that if pizza could eat pizza, it would be this pizza. Can you imagine how good a pizza would have to be for it to eat itself? Talk about irresistible. Now get an irresistible Howie deal for any budget starting at just $6.99. Hungry? Howie! Oh, what a beautiful night for football. It's Brother Rice, the Warriors, the home team, playing at Bloomfield Hills High School, home of the Blackhawks, against Cass Tech. It's the PSL against the Catholic League, two prize leagues. Uh, look, both programs needing a win tonight. Cass Tech needs it a little bit more. They extend their season if they do get the win. Rice does either way. Chad Bush, Sam Stick Day with you. We are the prep. Gridiron game day week nine, Stick. What do you see in these two teams as far as what they bring to the contest and their strengths? Well, the first thing that I'm excited to see is uh, Cass Tech on turf. I mean, they bring the speed. They bring the athleticism. Haven't been able to see them. We've mostly been calling them on natural grass fields. So watching Sadler get loose on turf is going to be something fascinating. And for Brother Rice, it's be physical. Be big. You know, can you take advantage of the matchup up front? Cass Tech, if you're going to pick a weakness, maybe some um, – inexperience on the offensive line that Brother Rice could take advantage of. Outside of that, though, it is going to be a great game. No nope. week against King. And then Jalen Thompson. This guy is an absolute game wrecker on both sides. He's going to Michigan State to be a defensive end. But if you watch him block on the offensive end, he's like 6'8", 300 pounds, can run like a gazelle. He's going to come at you. I'm exaggerating about how big he is. But he, <laughs> when you watch him out there, he is a big boy, and he is so athletic. He's so fun to watch. All right, we are set to go. George Sanchez to kick it off. Beautiful 63-degree night. We are the prep, and uh, we're going to send it uh, down to Lexi Ayala. If we're ready for Lexi and Lexi's thoughts on a big key matchup in this one. Lexi, take it away. Brother Rice's head coach, Adam Korzineski, knows that this Cast Tech team is full of speed, talent, and determination. However, he told me the matchup that he's most excited for tonight is his D-line against the technician's O-line. He said he knows that left side, specifically their center and left tackle, are younger and experienced players. That's where he wants to exploit a weakness in Cast Tech's offense. As for when we asked him about the freshman phenom wide receiver, Corey Sadler, he said plain and simple, the kid's a beast. We're going to do our best to keep him in front of us. He's going to make plays. Chad? All right. Thank you, Lexi. Sanchez to kick it off, and it'll be taken up the left sideline. Here we go. Max Orozco, who also plays baseball for the Warriors, is taken down at the 23-yard line. We'll see this Brother Rice offense led by Morogi. Morogi, the first-year starter, the junior, a guy that threw for a, a school second-best all-time in yards against De La Salle, and the upset win for the Warriors. 
against De La Salle earlier this year. Has missed a little bit of time with injury, but he's back. Was solid last week uh, in the win. The storyline for Brother Rice is injuries. Big time injuries this year. They've been without Christian Peters since week one. They're without Nolan Ray again tonight. Uh, he's been out most of the season. They're without Henry Garrity who's out, was injured against Orchard Lake St. Mary's. A lot of injuries for Rice, but they're here to play ball, and we'll see how they do tonight against this Cast Tech defense as the carry comes left side for a short game. And the wind is coming in here, too. You can feel it through the headphones. Yeah, but it's a nice opening play for Brother Rice. They're trying to establish the run early and often here, and you got to love those Brother Rice uniforms tonight, too. Halloween-themed, baby. Brother Rice is down to their third string running back in Vegas, say. Cash Papadellis is out. He was a late scratch. Nolan Shannon moves over to the tight end. Rice will spread it out here now. Three to the left, one to the right. Brother Rice with a second and nine. Meet the rest of their offense in a moment. Morogi pulls it out, quick throw left side. It's a Roscoe, and he's not going anywhere quickly. Quickly knocked down by Sean Randall. Sean Randall headed to Northern Illinois. And so it's a uh, gain of nil and third and long as we meet the offense for Brother Rice. Nikolai Korzanewski, the son of the head coach. Max Orozco and Andrew Kalka are the wide receivers. Rice here in a third and long. We look at this great offensive line. Petrasante, along with Nathan Scomer, Quadrini, Mackley, and Doherty. Petrasante's younger brother, Joey, actually slides into that left guard spot. So third and nine now stick with 10 and a half left. Big third down for the Warriors. Yeah, and this is when it comes in handy to have that type of quarterback. Third and nine situation. You know they're coming out passing. We'll see if uh, Cass Tech can put some pressure on them. Oh. Time out, Brother Rice. We'll keep it right here. Again, Rice out uh, without their left guard, Peters. Played in week one against Dakota, their 14-point their loss. They've got Eric Doherty up there. They still believe that this is an offensive line that can get them production in the run game. Uh, this Cast Tech defense has no mercy, but the injuries uh, stick. It's, it's a comedy of, of injuries Nolan Ray out, the, the Maryland commit. Henry Garrity, the Notre Dame commit on October 1st, out. Your three-year starter, Christian Peters at left guard, out. Uh, I mean, this is a lot to deal with. And oh, by the way, the backup to Nolan Ray tonight, Cash Papadalis, he's out. So they're down to their third string running back. Uh, these are tough times to get a win. Yeah, but that's the thing we talk about all the time, too, and especially in high school. It gives the next kid an opportunity to show up and make a play, and we saw it all year last year, too. A bunch of injuries, and next thing you know, next man up is the star of the game. So it's an opportunity for these kids to show what they have. Yep. It's a uh, four-man front for Cass Tech here in the third and long. Morogi from the left hash. Five-step drop in trouble. Runs away. This kid can run. He will, but he runs out of real estate. And he's out of bounds after a gain of two. He needed nine. And it's punting time for the Warriors and a standout job for the Cast Tech defense in their first attempt. Yeah, and that's the thing. Morogi may be able to run, but Cast Tech can also run. And when you get this uh, defense moving side to side, it's going to be tough to beat them to the edge. So this is uh, the punter. Griffin Party will punt it. The long snapper is Nikolai Korzanewski. Back deep is the ever dangerous Corey Sadler, who stands at his own 40. It's a low end over end. Sadler will sniff it and pick it up at his own 40. He's across midfield, still on his feet, breaks a couple tackles, shakes a couple ankles, well on his way left side, one man to beat, it's party, and he turns it in, and out of bounds inside the 20 at the 18 yard line. Corey Sadler with a 30 yard return, and the freshman phenom continues to dazzle folks here on Friday nights. And it's not just his speed, it's his vision and it's his strength. Look at he's able to break one arm tackle, sidestep another, start going north or east and west, and then beat everybody around the edge. And that's what's so fascinating about him. And then watch at the end, finishing this run. He's How about Griffin Party? He got him out of bounds, did his job. So here comes Mumfield. 
in a short field for Cass Tech. Team that trailed 14-0 in their ball game against King last week before coming all the way back. Play action, throw right side. Shake and bake at the 10, down at the nine. And a touchdown saving tackle that time by Ryan Gorska. 26, Ryan Gorsica made the tackle. It's a gain of uh, eight on first down and a fine catch and run by Elijah Jordan. Yeah, and you'll see that a lot out of Cast Tech tonight, just getting guys in space, getting it out to your playmakers and letting them make a play. Mumfield last week was 12 of 17 for 178 yards, two touchdowns and an interception. He'll send Jordan slot right, wide right watch for Alex Graham. And he got Sadler up top by himself. He's no slouch. It's an RPO, it's a keep by the quarterback and it might have been a mistake. It's a stout front for Brother Rice, but it's enough for the first down. It was second and short. And with nine minutes left, Cass Tech knocking on the door. The technicians coming off their best win in the Marvin Rushing era. Their win prolongs their season. They're trying to get in the playoff stick. They need a win tonight. They knocked off King last week, 28 to 14. As you look at Richmond, Anderson, and Hodges. Hodges the lead back, and he's to the right of Mumfield in the middle of the field. On a first and goal from the six. Moves Hodges to his left. Slot right is Sewell, who's checked in. The Central Michigan commit. Hand off to Hodges, right side. Bounces outside. Finds the end zone. Touchdown, Technicians. Six nothing cast on the Hodges touchdown. And the Technicians stay hungry on this Friday night in October. Uh, that's what they were talking about last week. I told you that was a statement win for them, and they're coming out early and often and showing what they can do. Look at Hodges. Look at this footwork. Just a quick little jet to the side, and nobody hardly even touches him before he gets into the end zone. Cass Tech coming out on fire. It's a six-yard touchdown run for Sean Hodges, the Grand Valley commit. And here comes the extra point off the right leg of George Sanchez, and it is blocked. The hold from Mumfield, it's blocked. And the snap was from Antonio Tate, so it's 6-0, 8.24 to go. We'll step aside, and when we come back, it'll be time for Brother Rice's second offensive series. This is Gridiron Game Day. It's week nine. We're the prep. Thanks for hanging out. Wilson Sports is the longtime official ball supplier of the Catholic League right, Championship. Yes. <laughs> I go like this. <laughs> The best part about playing football in Texas has to be the reaction from the community. I want to encourage others to play volleyball or choir because you get to experience new things and do stuff that you've never done before. My reason why is passion. My reason why is pride. So the Sadler 30-yard punt return sets up the short field, an 18-yard drive. And Stick Cast Tech is in the end zone thanks to their special teams and their sensational freshman, Mr. Sadler, number one. Yeah, I don't think you could script a better start for Cast Tech. Come out, shut them out, three, three and out on offense. <laughs> a nice punt return, a nice easy touchdown for your man Hodges. Hodges had 80 yards rushing last week and a touchdown. Grand Valley commit, there's a flubber out of bounds and this is gonna give Brother Rice just what they needed, a shorter field. For Blake Morogi to try to get it going, Brother Rice, it's been a wild ride of a season, injury riddled. That said, uh, a team that beat De La Salle, who some think is the best team in Division Two, some think and may have thought before the season started, or in the middle of the year that they're the best team in the state overall, I mean, an interesting win, which they did with some injuries in that game. They're capable, and they got to and, and you got to believe somewhere they believe. They have to, especially like you said. I mean, if you take down De La Salle, who we were talking about early preseason, this is the best team in the state, and that's part of the reason why you're sitting with a losing record and still able to make it into the playoffs because you beat a De La Salle. So that locker room lacks no confidence. No, sir. Three wins for Rice has them in win or lose tonight, according to uh, the predictors and. They've been pretty accurate all season. This is Say, he'll run it right side and have his best gain of the night at three. This is Vegas Say, the sophomore. Great name. 
Sure is. Again, Brother Rice down to their third string running back. They lost Nolan Ray, who came back for the Catholic Central game, and after 12 carries and an electrifying game, uh, was injured again. It was his off knee. Terrible, terrible things for the Maryland commit. Zach Boston, Chase Parker, and Caleb Richmond are the fine trio of linebackers for Cass Tech. It's a strong back end as well with Javen Sewell, the Central Michigan commit, along with Nickens, the Grand Valley commit, Shivers, the promising sophomore, and Sean Hodges, the future Grand Valley Lakers. Second and seven for Brother Rice from the right hash, trailing 6 nothing. RPO for Morogi, and he's going nowhere in a hurry. And that's the explosiveness of the linebacker, Sincere Jones. Yeah, and this is going to be the challenge for Brother Rice tonight. It, it, it's going to be tough to beat Catholic, or Catholic Central. It's going to be tough to beat Cast Tech to the edge, but it's also going to be tough to beat these guys up the middle. So what do you do on offense? You know, you want to start maybe running some misdirection plays, maybe start running some play action, start letting them use their athleticism against them, and hopefully you can get something going. But Brother Rice has a tall order tonight trying to penetrate this Cast Tech defense. Yes, sir. Let's see what uh, they'll try. Eight and four last year was Brother Rice the best in the Coach K era. Coach K in his sixth year, Marvin Rushing in his second year for Cast Tech. And this is going to set him back five further yards, and it's going to make this a third and longer with 6.48 to go in the first. My name is Chad Bush. His name is Sam Stick Day. We are the prep. Alex Westfall, your executive producer, who's now a quarter of a century old today. We've got happy birthday cupcakes. Yeah, we got one for you too, sir. <laughs> yep, you. Yep, you need a cupcake. Why not? We've got, you may be limited in choices, but uh, you've got one. Okay, third and 12. We got to get that updated, Mr. Scoreboard. 624 to go. Middle of the field for Morogi, the junior first year quarterback. Cluster to the left, and now too much time is going to set Adam Coach K off. And he's not happy with the setup. Stick, this is what happens when you have a lot of new pieces. We didn't also mention Garrity. He's out. We did, but the, the effect there is that you've got to move some of your receivers into the tight end spot. They've done that with Shannon, and it's caused all kinds of chaos. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, those are the breaks, you know. Football season's long, it's hard, it's tough, uh, but Brother Rice definitely has the talent to fill those spots as kids move up. So they've proven that, 10 state titles in school history. Seems like they're having some issues with who's on and who's off the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Third and 17, just over six minutes left in the opening quarter from Bloomfield Hills High School. Morogi rolls out, the athletic quarterback has his man caught. It's short of the first down by four yards. It's a solid gain across the 40, though. And this shows something out of the right-handed quarterback rolling this way. Yeah, and I like that call, though, by Brother Rice. We were talking about how are they going to get this defense moving. Well, you do that by not letting your quarterback just sit in the pocket. Get him out. Give him a little bit of time. And he was able to complete the pass. It looks like uh, discretion's going to take over here. And they are going to punt instead of going for it on fourth and four, which... I think it's the right call. Respectable. Uh, you know, Dan Campbell would not approve, but I do. <laughs> Uh-oh, the first shot. Griffin <laughs> Party in front punt formation. And Party's going to put it away. Sadler, who last time burned him for a 30-yarder, has it this time of the 25. Up the middle, outside, flag down, and he's down. Flung down on the play by number 87, that's Jack Flurry, the defensive tackle, also a baseball player. And this one's coming back, I think, Carter. Yeah, it looks like there's uh, some sort of illegal block, but man, Corey Sadler, anytime he gets the ball, there was not a lot of contain on that upper side of the field. I thought he was gone the minute he touched it. So fun to watch. He's down on the field before the game with the Cast Tech uh, staff and talking to linebacker coach Coley Robinson and he was bouncing on the turf saying man this is different than our field yep. <laughs> and goes, I can't, some of our guys can't wait to get running on this and I was like yep I, I, looking forward to watching him on it <laughs> I, I can remember the first turf field I ever played on was the Silverdome back in the oh, little league days and yeah and it was cement it was a whole different ball game though that, that yeah. the speed changes everything sure did what was, that was an experience. That was with the Wall Lake Braves, was it not? That is correct. Livonia Junior Football League. I'm sure you knocked off that Livonia Junior Football League. 
That'll set Castec all the way back to the 28. They're leading 6-0 though. An opening score by Hodges after a short field of just 18 yards. Throw right side is caught. This is Elijah Jordan. And Jordan's got a gain of about six up the right sideline before he's tackled by number 29. And that's uh, Alex Groschowski. Yeah, that's coming back though for a holding penalty. Oh yes. So penalties uh, were a factor for Cast Tech in the game we covered week one. It was also a factor for Southfield. Last week though, the penalties were cut down to just six in that game, and, and, and Cass has really tightened everything up knowing that they're uh, win or go home. Yeah, I mean, their head coach brought up a great point last last week in their post-game interview is that they, these kids haven't been together since their freshman year because of COVID. They've never all been able to practice all together, so now they're finally getting a rhythm. Pass complete to Sadler here. He is contained. It's a very good Brother Rice defense. Outside of that De La Salle game, that's Rockney Jacobs, the linebacker. We'll take a look at that Brother Rice defense right about now. And it is a second and 20. So this is the sort of defensive formation you like. Andre Cade is one of the linebackers, along with Jacobs, who made that tackle. Cash Papadellis is a late scratch in this game. Vegas say pops in. Langston Nevels at an outside backer spot. And a very good back end we'll see in a moment. Second and 20 for Cass, leading 6 0. Mumfield on the quarterback draw, going to get dragged down at about the 22 yard line. It's a gain of four. It's going to set up third and 16 with four and a half left. And we'll see a Cass Tech who has big play explosive potential stick draws up here. And you never know. That, that's the cool thing about Cass Tech is they have so many weapons. You, it's really hard to just take away one of them. They got an injury timeout, big number 75 for Cass Tech down on the field right now. Yeah, that uh, 75 is there. Looks like the defensive tackle. That's not on the sheet. Yeah, and he's walking off under his own power. That's good. But yeah, here we are, third and 15, third and 16. You know, there aren't many plays in the playbook to get this, but when you're a team like Cass Tech, throw a little bubble screen to Corey Sadler. Get him over the middle. You know, make some sort of screen pass because you know Brother Rice is going to be bringing the heat. No doubt. They're bringing the heat with uh, Andrew Labar, who's headed to Brown, who we featured in the open. Eric's Doherty, who's also a high major commit as well. D tackle Jack Flurry. And Cameron Bryan at that end spot. It's been a very good defensive front. So here we go, third and 16 for Cass. The first third down, play action. Mumfield has time, looking deep, got a man, overshot him at the 40. He had the speedy Alex Graham open, who just stuck behind the Rice defender, Grashowski and it's just a little bit long. Yeah, and this was a great play. Play action pass, you get the linebackers to come up a little bit, you have one guy running kind of a post route on there, and you have everybody else from the left taking away the underneath coverage. He's gonna have nightmares about missing that throw. So here's Ben Eck, the senior, also a midi on the lacrosse team. Leads the team in tackles, he can return punts as well. Mumfield, the quarterback, goes back. Excuse me, Sanchez. No, that is Mumfield. He'll go back and punt. And Eck will field it down at the 43. And he is knocked down by Cassius Shivers. And no flag. And so Brother Rice football, their best field position now at the 42-yard line. And they trail stick 6-0. Yeah, but that was a good response by Brother Rice defense. I mean, on that first, here you get a look at him getting hit while he was down. Uh, good no fly. It's a borderline call. If you want to call it, it clearly yeah. could have been called, but I didn't think it was egregious enough to get a penalty. Uh, but no, this is big for Brother Rice because they couldn't stop him on the first drive. That was a really easy scoring drive. I mean, it took him, what, 30 seconds to put it in the end zone. So to come out, force him back, third and 16, get the ball at midfield. Rice is feeling a little bit better about themselves right now. They sure are. There's the big fella right there, big number 55. Just keep your eye on him at all times. Yep, that's the Michigan State commit. 
Mr. Jalen Thompson, right side, has a hole, has a first down. And the biggest gainer of the game comes for Rice off that right side, and it's Vincent Farich, a sophomore running back, a guy that has had limited action this year. Might be his best carry of the season. Yeah, good vision, way to see the cutback. Most running backs will still try to take that to the sideline, but you know your speed cannot get you there against a team like Cast Tech. So plant that foot in the ground, use your power, picked up a first down. And I like Brother Rice running away from the aforementioned Jalen Thompson too. A lot of folks have been running away from Thompson not Michigan State. They ran down to him and, and grabbed him. Big and the uh, other end is Kamari Anderson. Stick, I'm sorry. He's headed to Cincinnati. Rice into technician territory for the first time tonight. He'll keep with a hot hand, and it's a gain of just two this time. Quick convergence by Cass. Caleb Richmond, the linebacker, comes up, amongst others. Gain of two on the play. And that's one of those typical first down plays. You know, we're just trying to establish, we pick up five yards here, we know what we're getting into, but way to fill the hole by Cass Tech coming up. My goodness, that is how defense is played by Caleb Richmond. Yeah. <laughs> Going over that right side, Charles Mackley, who's all Catholic, on that right side, a big part of their success. Charlie Petrosante on the left side with his brother Joey now next to him at the left guard spot. Second down and eight with 2.20 left in the first. We got a motion penalty. And they're going to let this thing go. It could be offsides. I'm not sure, but uh, I think this one is going back. Illegal motion. Not something this Rice team could afford to play behind the sticks. Rice is coming off a 28-6 win last week in Beverly Hills. They knocked off Country Day, their rival down Losser, in a game at which was pretty much a shutout stick, 28-0 until the late seconds. Country Day scored. It was a game after taking a week off. After the St. Mary's loss, they really came back and, and looked focused and determined. Yeah, and that's what you need to be going into the playoffs. It's kind of, you know, you got to trend up, right? You don't want a team that starts out hot and kind of fades into the playoffs. You want a team that's starting to get their legs under them, starting to get that confidence. Because once you get in the dance, you never know what's going to happen. Yep. Rice is playing with heavy hearts. Uh, tonight, their offensive coordinator, Steve Deutsch, has uh, lost his brother this week. And uh, our thoughts are with him and his family. Coach K has been adding offensive coordinator duties to his title this week, so that's part of the offensive chaos. There's an interruption there, and that's a lot of heat coming again. Caleb Richmond, the linebacker, and it forces a fourth down punt, so this Cast Tech defense responds quickly and abruptly with pressure. <laughs> I mean, they gave up on that play in a hurry. I, I thought he had a couple more seconds to get that ball off or to try to make the screen pass work, but it was like, uh-uh, they snapped it, threw it into the ground immediately. Number one, Corey Sadler. Corey Sadler, Sadler back again to field his third punt. Party back out to boot it for the third time from his own 40, and I'm sure he's trying to boot this thing away from Sadler. That is nearly blocked, but a run into the kicker, and this will give Rice a first down and a costly penalty after the ball was not blocked by Javen Sewell. The Chippewa commit committed a boo-boo. Yeah, that wasn't just running into. That was roughing by the definition. He spins them around, and whenever you hit that kicking leg and it's up in the air like that, that's, what, that's exactly what they're trying to protect. That's such a vulnerable position. Now, if he blocks that. Yeah, if you block it, it's a fair game. Story. Yep. But just, how did he miss it? Great play by Javen Sewell, a fine defender. Also a great wide receiver. We saw that first touchdown of the year was an extended over grab in the end zone. <laughs> Jackie Robinson over the shoulder catch. Yeah, That's part awesome. one of Cast Tech and Southfield. Or Willie Mays, I'm sorry. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> they want to credit the right guy who's the over, the, over the head basket catch. That's fair. That makes me think of uh, Major League and Willie Mays Hayes. Oh man, what a great one. Motiv I wish I could motivate like that manager. <laughs> could really motivate. Dorn. <laughs> First and 10 for Brother Rice after the roughing the kicker on Cast Tech. 
on third and long. Throw left side and incomplete, and a flag at the goal line. Morogi was looking down the pipe for Labar, who's known to play a little fullback, but more for his defensive end spot. And we got P.I. coming. And uh, they're going to get, Car is that Carter Clark? Yeah, Carter Clark. And this is interesting. It was a rollout throw back, and there's some hand playing going on. But if you never look back to the ball, it, it, sometimes you're going to get called on that. And he may have had his arm hooked as well. No, pass interference, another first down on this drive, coming from penalties, and that's what's been keeping Brother Rice on the field. So Brother Rice takes advantage, taking their shots against this very good secondary. It has uh, Nickens, Hodges, Sewell, along with uh, the freshman Corey Sadler. Alex Graham back there as well. So first and 10 from the 16 for Rice, trying to tie this thing up. Ocean right to left by Kolka. And this is going to be a TFL. And the charge is led again by the inspired Caleb Richmond. Yeah, and I was just going to say, he filled that gap last time, and then he does it again. He is playing the linebacker position tonight, like out of a textbook. Look at him, scrape, scrape, fill the hole, come forward, tackle for loss. That is ideal right there. Sure is. So second down and 11 for Brother Rice. 28 points last week against Country Day. Just 15 two weeks prior to that. They had a bye in between against Orchard Lake St. Mary. So which offense will show up here? A lot of weapons down. Handoff left side. Bounce out. Inside the numbers. Inside the five to the one. How about it? Making a statement tonight. Introducing himself to the orange and black is Vincent Farrick. And that's exactly what we talked about. Yes, injuries happen, but next man up mentality. And look at this. Look at this hop skip to the left and then beats everybody to the edge. Almost runs over a tackler to get into the end zone, leading to a first and goal from about the two and a half yard line. But man, but it, that's what we were talking about, Chad. Underclassmen, somebody else, second string, gets a second chance up here. Perform. Opportunities presenting themselves tonight on the final week on a Friday night in Bloomfield Hills. We're coming back with a second quarter. This is Gridiron Game Day Week 9. We're the prep. Thanks for watching. Hi, folks. Dr. Joe here again with Michigan Orthopedic Surgeons. Everywhere you look this time of year, people are running. And that's a great thing because running is an excellent exercise, especially for your cardiovascular and musculoskeletal systems. But the question is, are you running a safe running program? All too often, people are hobbled by things like shin splints and patellar tendonitis. But luckily, simple things like stretching and warm up, the right running shoes, and realistic weekly mileages can keep you in your running game. For more information, go to miorthosurgeons.com. Welcome back to Blackhawk Stadium. Chad Bush, Sam Stick Day. Brother Rice trying to tie this game up. Fullback dive. No signal yet. Just short. I've been watching the official that was on the line here, and he, he was not calling anything. They're saying the ball is loose, and now an official says second down. Yeah. So that was in the middle of the line, and you're not sure who got the ball at the bottom of this. It was the first Triad. back through. Yep, right there. First back through. Okay. I think that was number 45, Andrew Labar. Here we go. So second and goal. Morogi is a guy that can run a bit, but he does just 5'10". 
It's about as close as you can get to, without being in the end zone. Here we go, Labar the up man. Morogi under center. Quarterback sneak. Touchdown, Brother Rice. They've tied it at six on the Morogi one-yard quarterback sneak. And the answer by this Rice offense, aided by penalties nonetheless, and we're tied up at six. And you know, I love that coach. I love that call by the Brother Rice coach. Sometimes these coaches outthink themselves to try to pitch it to the outside. I hate when you take a ball further away from the touchdown Agreed. than it is when you snap the ball. So you got your quarterback, just fall forward, touchdown, tie game, extra point will put him in the lead. Right on. Here comes the extra point attempt by Party. Owen Party's a good one, and he knocks it through. So Brother Rice takes the lead with 11-12 to go here in this second quarter. We'll keep it right here. And uh, with the touchdown for Rice, they've taken a one-point lead. Let's go now on the sideline. Down to Lexi Ayala. Lexi. Brother Rice's head coach, Kay, told us about the benefits of being a multi-sport athlete. He said he has a handful of guys who are multi-sport athletes, but one of his greatest examples are his two seniors, Sam Klein and Ben Eck. He said they played two sports for three years together. That's lacrosse and football, and it only helps build the chemistry of this team. He said they're all best friends on this team. Not only that, in lacrosse and football, there's a lot of things that translate, and Coach is able to teach them and relate to them in a way that applies. Chat. It matters. Friendship matters, liking your teammate matters, and uh, playing multiple sports and multiple seasons with your teammates matters. Yeah, yeah. There's there seem to be like a, a going away from that with people for a long time. Like, no, I want my kid to be a specialist. And then you got like your Patrick Mahomes, who were great at baseball, and now they're also in the NFL. Those athletes seem to translate a lot better in today's game than before. So. Yeah, if you're a parent, let your kid play every sport. I, 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 I think that's so important. Yep. Back deep is Hodges along with Sadler and Sewell for the technicians who split with uh, Detroit King, but knocked them off last week, 28 to 14. Big win for the technicians. And Sewell will take it at his own five yard line. The Central Michigan commit will pop it outside. Has some daylight. Watch out to the 31 before he's finally spilled and tackled by number 52, Cameron Frazier. So let's take a look at the Cast Tech profile and the technicians, as Stick mentioned, come in five and three. 2,400 students out of the Detroit Public School League. Athletic Director Jay Alexander, Marvin Rushing, the fine head coach in his second season. Very demonstrative in, in how he felt about that win Love last that week. Love that post-game interview. Three-time state champions are the technicians. Last in 2016, back-to-back -back at 11 and 12. And how about Sweet Lou Nichols the third, the Central Michigan Chippewa, who led the nation a season ago, the pride of the technicians. Also the MAC Offensive Player of the Year a season ago and a uh, high round draft pick projection. This is an end around. This is Elijah Jordan who's gotten a lot of targets and this time it's going nowhere. Ben Eck says heck no. TFL for number one who leads this team in tackles. And that's a team effort right there because 33 Sam Klein to me is the guy that makes the play. You're going to see him come here at the end of the screen and push him back up the field to number one and that is uh, that's good team ball right there. You know, you don't always have to make the play. Just set your teammate up. Teammates in lacrosse, teammates on the back end in football. Prime example of what uh, Lexi Ayala was talking to us about just moments ago. Second and 16. Second down and 16. Mumfield the senior with the technicians in white. Hodges to his right, two to the right. And we've got movement and we've got a false start. So the technicians are going to be second and 21, down a point with 10.07 to go. This game has really changed on the penalties and the miscues of Cass Tech. And give Brother Rice credit, Stick, they've taken advantage of them. Yeah, that's what you have to do. I mean, they got a first down off a punt, and they got another first down off of a pass interference. They were able to score on that. And now Cast Tech with a couple self-inflicted wounds on the offensive end, helping out the defense. Under 10 minutes to go, second quarter.
Mumfield in the gun. Has plenty of time behind this bulky line all day. Little backyard ball here, improvising. Mumfield, middle of the field, incomplete, late flag down. That's a ball that Corey Sadler usually catches. And this flag's in the area of holding. Brother Rice is going to decline it. It'll be third and 21 with nine and a half left until the break. Momentum is shifted here. Red carpet for Mumfield, Cast Tech unable to cash in. Yeah, I was looking downfield and I was seeing what Mumfield was seeing. There was absolutely no wide receiver open. They tried to send someone deep. It was triple covered. Underneath routes were all covered. So Mumfield did his best. Brother Rice couldn't get any pressure on him, so why not just hang out? Hopefully something opens and usually you see a holding on a defensive back when it's long like this. But the offensive line held for Mumfield and now you're 10 yards back from where you were. They declined it, so here we are third down. Credit the coverage for Brother Rice. It was great. Kyle Galley, a safeties coach for them. And Brad Cochran coaches their cornerbacks. Cochran's kid went to St. Mary's. Throws it right side, Sadler. Inside the numbers, watch out. Easy electric. Inside the 30, he stood up by Eck and he's put down on this plush turf in Bloomfield. There is a flag down late on the far side of the field. My partner thinks it's a face mask. He might be right. There's some one-on-one -on -one action going on there. And then you see, I love that play call though. You know, it's third and 21. Let me get Corey Sandler out in the open. And there you go, you see the clear face mask right there. And that'll give him a first down. I mean, you go from third and 21 to a first down. That is a huge swing. Live by the sword, die by the sword. That's true. Not that they were trying to be the sword on the other end. <laughs> yeah. But penalties giveth, penalties take us away. There we go. What better said. Mark that baby at the halfway stripe, 9-10 left. Welcome back home to a couple of our crew members, Adam Fuller, one of them. Class of 2018, the Blackhawks. Former soccer star. And Brandon Nager, one of our rising cameramen, doing great work. Hodges from the right side on a first and 10. He'll have a healthy game. He fights forward and has seven inside the 45 to the 43. And the future Laker headed to Grand Valley, pumping those legs on this turf. And I love his patience at the beginning of this. He doesn't hit the whole mm -hmm. full speed. Look at, well, no, no, now I'm gonna go. <laughs> and, and that's mm -hmm. exactly, sometimes you gotta let your blockers get out in front of you, set up, because you can overrun them sometimes and get yourself into trouble. So great, great vision. It's a really good offensive line too for Cass Tech. They've had to sprinkle in some youth. It's a solid receiving core with Sewell, Jordan, and Sadler amongst them. Jordan's gotten a lot of run tonight. And that offensive line, Thompson on that right side sealed it nicely. So eight minutes left, Cast Tech down a point. Mumfield wants to go for it all. Got a man right side over the head and well covered by Ben Eck. He was looking for his D1 high major offered Alex Graham. It was too tall and it's third and short. Yeah, it's interesting. He looked off the safety, so it's almost like he knew he was going to go deep on there, just a little too far over his head. That's kind of underthrown. That's almost a better throw in that situation because then your wide receiver can work back through the DB. Graham has about 10, offer, 10 offers, all high major. Ben Eck is at a corner spot, the multi-sport star, also a midi on the LAX team. Uh, Alex Grozahowski. Is that one of the corner spots? And Sam Klein, also a lacrosse star, commit to Bryant in lacrosse is at free safety. He also plays wide receiver, had a big touchdown uh, a few weeks ago against De La Salle to spark that upset win. So this is fourth down. They did not get the two yards required stick. Fourth and short, four down territory. This is the challenge Brother Rice's front seven really wanted. And here it is. <laughs> this is. If you want it, you call for it, you better be ready for it. It's fourth and one now, and we'll see what the Rice coach does. Do you bring pressure here? Because they had some good luck sitting back with the coverage. Cast Tech's front five want this too, you better believe. Fourth and one, critical play from the 41. Play action, look in air, intercepted! Picked off right side. 
Ryan Gorska with a football all the way back to the 49 yard line. Interception, turnover force, the first of the night. Warriors with a big time play on third. Yeah, and it's gonna come back though 15 yards because Alec Barish uh, kind of took a shot when he saw his shot. It was a clean hit. It was obviously a penalty, but it, you'll see number 30 come in for Brother Rice and clean this up at the end. But they tried to roll Mumfield to his left. It, it just must have been a miscommunication. Number, I'm sorry, pardon. Oh no, go ahead. Number 26. Great interception, great return. But yeah, 30 saw his shot and he took it. <laughs> yeah, he did. And it's going to cost Brother Rice 15 yards. But they keep the lead regardless. Big time play forcing a turnover for this defense. But you know what? If you're not to interrupt you, if no, you're Cast yeah. Tech, it was fourth and one. That's an incomplete pass. You're getting the ball all the way up here at the 40. This almost isn't worst case scenario. What kind of a statement is it to Brother Rice that, hey, we're going to throw on you on fourth and short? That is that was an interesting call. Maybe they were hoping to catch him off guard. First and ten from the 26. Motion right to left by Shannon. Play action. Morogi going to put it down, take it himself, and take a slide into second for a stolen base. Did that in front of Chase Parker. Was that a wise choice? It was a wise choice to pull it down and run with it. I just think he could have gotten a lot more out of that play. I think he kind of slid a little too premature. But, hey, you know, self-preservation is important in this game, too. Why, not, why take a hit when you don't have to? Well, a team that's been injury-riddled is Rice, Fair. to your point. I mean, that's something you do want to watch. They do have uh, the backup quarterback in play, uh, who you don't want to have to get to, but they do like uh, their, their future quarterback with Michael Seigen, the sophomore. Second and six from the 30. Inside give, I believe it's Labar. He's going to fight forward and not have much, and it's tough trekking against that cast tech front. Uh, man, led by 44, Sincere Jones. Yeah, just a straight handoff to your fullback. Not much going on there in the middle of the line. I'll tell you what, 21, Vincent, <laughs> him. Farich, yeah. yeah. Vincent Farich just went toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of my favorite guys, Jalen Thompson. <laughs> and we'll see how that lineup plays up. But we're starting to get a little chippiness. They're starting to feel it. Now that it's tied up or they're up by one, like yeah. this could becoming a real football game in a hurry. It is. Rice playing with house money. They're in. A receiver to each side, third and five. Motion from Kolka. Handoff right side, and it is close to a first down, and it is. Move the chains, they needed five, they got five. And there's a starborn sometimes out of depth challenges. And tonight, partner, Vincent Farich might be that guy, the sophomore. And that's what's given him the will to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Thompson. But look at him here, fighting, battling, getting that first down. Helmet pops off, points for the first down. Great, great block, too, on the way down there uh, by number 44, John Torrey. He did, spurred him for those extra few yards. First down, Rice, a big cash in on third down with no cash in their back pocket. And Papa Dallas. See what you did there. Thank you. Good for one again. <laughs> Orozco wide left. And that one's going for maybe a half yard. Cass Tech just so strong up front. You got three Division I defensive linemen that play and rotate in. And a person that folks should be talking more about is Caleb Richmond who's been disruptive all night. Yeah, definitely just been filling gaps all night long. But there you go. Maybe they were just rewarding uh, John Torek on that. Like, hey, he had a great block. Feed, feed the beast a little bit, you know? <laughs> He'll now check out in favor of Zach Moore, the junior wide receiver. Again, Rice down on depth. A lot of injuries. Arogi, the confident signal caller. Very poised, Coach K said. And now we get a timeout, and Coach K calls it again. Brother Rice without their offensive coordinator tonight. So it's been, it's been working things together. This is teamwork sometimes with coaches, right? Sometimes a coach goes down, you got to back him up and coach that position. He just happens to be in a big spot, the OC. 
Yeah, but we talk about for the players, it's next man up. Same thing for the coaches. No doubt. We look at the Brother Rice Warriors in comfy with three wins and four losses. So, yes, they could lose this game and still be in. They're in Division Three. They're about a 500 students worth of all boys in the Catholic League Central Division. Adam Korzanewski is their sixth-year head coach, the former Gross Point North product, graduated in 92. We'll see more about him later. State champs 10 times over are the Warriors last in 2013. An alum you should know, T.J. Lang, an 05 grad, Eastern Michigan guy, guy who played in the pros from down the road, played for the Lions, Super Bowl champion, two-time Pro Bowler, T.J. Lang, uh, who, who we're proud to say is one of our own yep. uh, when we claim and talk about Detroiters and Lions and Catholic League. It grows, you know. You, you're a brother if you're in the Catholic League or even in the state of Michigan when you talk about Prideful pros. And I got an interesting TJ Lang story after this play. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Is it okay for YouTube? Yes, it's okay for uh, public. No, um, no, I can't. I was able to ahead. interview TJ uh, about a year ago, and we were talking about the differences uh, about playing for the Detroit Lions. And one of those things that always stuck with me he said, I could block the same way for Aaron Rodgers, no penalty called. I come to Detroit, penalties were thrown on me. He said, There's something with the officials and how they officiate the Lions differently. And, you know, I'm a conspiracy theorist Lions fan yeah, my whole life. Like, that, yeah, but what yeah. does it matter? Yeah, it doesn't matter. But when the guy's <laughs> like, no, I blocked this way in Green Bay. I blocked this way in Detroit. One was right. One was wrong. Oh, man. How stuck with it? me. It's stuck with me to this day. I'm bitter. I like it. Yeah, bitter. And, yeah, that's YouTubeable. Yeah. 310 left. Brother Rice in a third and long. Morogi looking right. Nothing home. Pitch and go. Slant route caught. It's short of the first down. It's Max Orozco who went down and caught it. It's a great grab by the fabulous middle infielder as well for the baseball Warriors. How about this throw by Morogi? It's not just the throw. It's the pump fake that freezes Kamari Anderson because that's what opens up the play. He's not open when he does the pump fake, but the pump fake freezes Anderson. He's able to get behind him, and that, that was perfect. Morogi, a guy that Coach Case has really has, has overcome you know, he's 5'10", so there's some things, as you mentioned, the pitch, or is the pump, and faking. Mm -hmm. That's something that's important for a guy who's who's under six foot. Yeah, use that wiggle, though. No doubt. So here we go, fourth and one. Brother Rice looking like they're going for it on their own 45. Up a point in their own territory. And we get a delay a game, and we'll get the punt that Rice was going to do anyway. I wonder if they were trying to draw him off sides and we're okay with taking that penalty, but that's several times in this game where Brother Rice has already used the timeout to prevent the delay of game. Actually, twice they've had to do that, so I wonder if there's just some communication issues getting the plays in. Well, I think, again, it goes back to that offensive coordinator and, and not being fully with him. Adam uh, Kornishevsky, the Brother Rice head coach, in his sixth year, led him to eight wins a season to go, program best under his tutelage. You look at the three wins this year again, it, it's tough. I mean, it, it's against a schedule that I believe is rated currently the fifth toughest in the state of Michigan. So party to punt it away for the fourth time. Rice clinging to a one-point lead. And the ever-dangerous freshman sensation, Corey Sadler, is back. Party over his head, corrals it, and clobbers it. And this could be the play of the game thus far. How about it? A 45-yard punt on the run with some heat-seeking missiles wearing technician jerseys coming for his head well, behind him. Brother Rice got extremely lucky there because Cast Tech was going for the return. Watch everybody run backwards as soon as the ball is snapped. They are not trying to pressure this kick. Watch. Mm. No pressure at all. Right. So they got lucky that that was the call. Last play, or last punt, you know that they were in there and got the penalty. They had that same call on. That's a recovered fumble. No doubt. Griffin Party with a fine play. His brother's the place kicker, Owen Party. They're both seniors, and so I'm assuming they're twins. Mumfield back to pass left hash. Curl route caught and taken down immediately. How about the tackle coming from the outside linebacker, Rockney Jacobs? The football name man. And as we know, Corey Sadler, taking him down by yourself is a challenge, but he was able to do it, caught him in the open field, and took him down one-on-one. -on -one. It was a great tackle. Yeah. 
Second and six. Hodges bounces outside. Turns the corner. Out of bounds inside Warrior territory at the 49-yard line. And that's a nice rip off. His longest of the night is 16 yards before he's forced out of bounds by Brennan Parent. I was going to... Brennan Parent actually tried to make this play on the outside. He gets blocked, but look at it, he just tries to stretch it out. And, kicked. Yeah, and then nobody from Brother Rice could beat him to the edge, but he did his job on that play. Sam Klein forces him out of bounds. We're under 90 seconds left in the first half. Brother Rice by a point. The only difference, a missed extra point by Cass Tech. Mumfield changing the play. Two wide receivers. Sadler wide right. Bottom of your screen is Graham. Looking for him. Out route. Caught. Graham at the 30. Down to the 25. Down to the 10. Still on his feet. Down at the 6-yard line. A 36-yard completion. And most of it done by Mr. Graham all on his own. And that's kind of what we've been waiting for all game long, right? You know Cass Tech has these athletes. You know it's got the guys that can break tackles in space with speed. And that's exactly what happened on that play. Just a little curl route, nothing major. And then, boom, two broken tackles. And next thing you know, you're inside the five. First and goal from the six. Hodges again. Breaks a tackle inside. Touchdown. Two tackles broken. And that'll be the theme of the series. Cass Tech get loose. And a late score as I'm up 12 to seven. Hodges is in for the second time tonight from six yards. And that's exactly why we highlighted him pre-game. I mean, you watch this run, he, he dead to rights by all means. One missed tackle there, another one there, able to cut it back in. Easy touchdown for Hodges. Mumfield will hold it. The snap will come from Antonio Tate. And Sanchez to try to get the extra point here, and he does. So, with 51 seconds left until halftime, 13 to seven, Cast Tech goes on top. Stick, talk about this drive and this answer by Cast Tech when things look dismal in this second quarter. Yeah, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. Like, you felt like this game was starting to slip away from Cass Tech. They had the gift earlier, the big punt return. They were able to score early in the game. But then Brother Rice responded, and they got their extra point to put them up by one point. And their defense was holding strong. But, you know, penalties have been a story on both sides of the ball here. And Brother Rice was able to take, um, unfortunately, have some penalties against them, which kept the Cass Tech drive going just like Cast Tech did for Brother Rice having penalties. So Rice, they got to step up. They got 50 seconds. You wonder if they're going to go for it or you think they're going to sit on it going into half? Great question. Great question. If you're asking, I think that they're going to sit on it. There are big play guys. There are guys that you would say take a shot. We also know they've used about six timeouts <laughs> in this half. That is it true. It does show they have one. They should have one left. Right? So they got seven in the first half. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but... It, um, yeah, so it's a good question. I think I think you let the return dictate question. it, right? Yeah. If, if you get this ball near the 40-yard sure. line, we got some time. We can matriculate down yep. the field. If it's back to the 20, I don't know if you want to take those passing risks against an athletic team like Cast Tech. Right. Ben Eck is a fine return man. He is back there. And Sanchez to boot it from his own 40. It's a short end over end. It hits Say. He corrals it at the 32. So we'll see what Brother Rice does here. We know that Cast Tech has come back. What a drive by Cast Tech and an answer. They take the lead 13 to 7. And um, it's been a game of back and forth and, and tight. We saw some lines out there that are put out by Goose Poop, and they said this was an even line. So uh, it's following suit to what was predicted. By uh, those fine folks. And I love those types of games where I can come in and I can't predict who's going to win. And that was one of these types of games tonight. You know, I would give the athleticism to Cass Tech. Uh, you think they got a couple more playmakers. But we'll see how it winds up. And we'll see what Brother Rice does on this play. Maybe they chuck it deep just to try it. Marogi hands off left side. And that will give you your answer. Just back to the line of scrimmage. 
is Vincent Ferrich, who's had a fine first half, but can't get away from Corey Sadler. And uh, Cass Tech, will they stop the clock? They have three timeouts. Looks like the answer is no. Stick around at halftime. We'll talk to Lexi Ayala. Before the break, we'll also have uh, Sticks analysis, highlights, and scores from around the state in this final Friday night on Gridiron Game Day. What a beautiful night it is. We got the window open here, fresh mm. fall air. You got the trees changing colors in the background. And it is halftime. It is indeed. Time has winded down. Cast Tech with a final score in this half to take a 13 to seven lead after Rice led seven to six for most of the middle of this half. It was Cast Tech who opened the scoring with a Hodges six yard touchdown run. He had two of those. And the brother Rice score in between On a Brother Rice drive stick that was put together well and, and, and was injury, or excuse me, the penalty laden, but they punched it in, and this is the ball game that, that we thought we would see so far. Yeah. It's a desperate Cast Tech team. Yeah, Cast Tech, they need to win this game. They need to get into the playoffs, and after what we saw last week out of their head coach, you know that he's got these boys fired up, and they are on a mission to make it not only into the playoffs, they're thinking they can go far in the playoffs, too. They, they're thinking that this program is back. He literally said, Cast Tech is back. We own Detroit. Well, if you run that city, you should be able to do pretty well amongst the state. No doubt. We'll step aside for a brief moment, and uh, we'll come back in 30 seconds with the Brother Rice head coach, Coach Adam Kornoshevsky. We're back in a moment. 13-7 to on Gridiron Game Day Week 9, the Friday finale Cass Tech over Brother Rice. We're midway through. Thanks for watching. We're coming right back. You see that? How you can see every delicious speck of sesame, garlic herb, butter cheese. That is what flavored crust should look like. Crust so irresistible that if pizza could eat pizza, it would be this pizza. Can you imagine how good a pizza would have to be for it to eat itself? Talk about irresistible. Now get an irresistible Howie deal for any budget starting at just $6.99. Hungry? Howie! Hi folks, Dr. Joe here again with Michigan Orthopedic Surgeons. Did you know that kids are not little adults when it comes to sports injuries? That's because of something called the growth plate. Growth plates exist all over the human body in our growing athletes. They're actually little cartilage discs that exist at the end of all the long bones, it's simply where a kid grows. The problem is that the growth plate can be the weak link. What might be a sprain, a strain, or a tear in an adult when they hurt themselves can actually be a growth plate fracture in a kid. So it's important if your kid has hurt themselves and they're not using their arm or they're not able to put weight on a leg, come see one of us, get an x-ray, and make sure it's not a growth plate fracture. For more information, go to miorthosurgeons.com.
I got a marker. Huh? Coach, we'll grab you coming back in the half. We're having technical difficulties. What happened? Doesn't get much better than that. A fall night in Michigan, high school football. Beautiful sunset, leaves are changing, weather's perfect. My name is Stick alongside Chad Bush. This is the prep and we are at halftime. Cast Tech versus the Brother Rice Warriors. Cast Tech up 13 to seven right now. And here is how we got here. Started off with Corey Sadler on a massive punt return, breaking tackles, going left, going right, around the edge, all the way in to Brother Rice territory. He was finally taken out uh, just inside, just outside the 10 yard line. Cast Tech from there was able to score easily, handing the ball off to Hodges, little sidestep. Next thing you know, he's in the end zone. Cast Tech misses the extra point, putting him up six nothing. And then you hear, you see Cast Tech getting it done on the defensive end two. But number 21 for Brother Rice doing his thing, pounding the ball all the way down to the one yard line, and that led to the Blake Morogi quarterback sneak. Brother Rice gets the extra point to put them up seven to six. Then a big interception by number 26, Ryan Gossier, correct? Yes, and that led, uh, Brother Rice could not convert on that, but Cast Tech came back on the play for the last drive in the half to get Sean Hodges his second touchdown of the game. And that leaves us where we're at right now. Brother Rice sitting at seven, Cast Tech sitting at 13. And I'm gonna sit here and stare at this sunset while we're waiting for the second half to begin. It is Gridiron Game Day right here on The Prep. that this is a game of interest, but I disagree. This is a game of desire and will. Four quarters of epic drama that plays out in real time right before our very eyes. If every season begins the same way, with a desire to win, those with the will to put in the effort and time put themselves in the best position to achieve their desire. This is why we go to work early and come home late. Why we go so hard and why we put in all these hours. Because we have a desire to be great and the will to become everything we dreamed of and more. So when the drama's thick and it comes down to just those few precious inches, we have no doubt what the outcome will be. Because we have the will to outwork anyone get what we desire. It doesn't matter if it's inches or a hundred yards. We want it more and we're going to take it. That's game. Hi folks, Dr. Joe here with Michigan Orthopedic Surgeons. We all know that our wives and daughters deserve special attention, but that's especially true when it comes to their knees. Do you know that females are at a two to five times risk compared to their male counterparts when it comes to blowing out their knees? It doesn't seem fair, but it's true. 
The reasons include the way females are made and the way they fire their muscles. But fortunately, there are injury prevention programs out there that can greatly decrease this risk of injury. And if you do know a female who blows out her ACL, don't despair. We have neat, innovative, minimally invasive ways to fix their knees and get them back onto the field. For more information, go to miorthosurgeons.com. Cast Tech with a lead 13 to 7 over Brother Rice at the break. We're the prep. This is week 9. Gridiron game day. Chad Bush alongside Sam Stick Day and Lexi Ayala. Right now we're going to send it to highlights from week 8. And uh, stay with the PSL theme. It was the Detroit Public School League Championship called by John Losey and Sam Stick Day. And highlights coming from Cass and King. How you can see every delicious speck of sesame, garlic herb, butter cheese. That is what flavored crust should look like. Crust so irresistible that if pizza could eat pizza, it would be this pizza. Can you imagine how good a pizza would have to be for it to eat itself? Talk about irresistible. Now get an irresistible Howie deal for any budget starting at just $6.99. Hungry? Howie! Today I'm going to tell you about sportsmanship because it's important. Treat your opponents the way you would want to be treated. <laughs> My mom says that. Listen to the referees. It's their job. Be nice to their team and our team. Cheer them on. Always play fair. It's the right thing to do. It's sportsmanship. It's not that hard. In today's ever-changing real estate and mortgage lending world, the importance of a true professional has never been higher. At Success Mortgage Partners, our mission is for every borrower to receive level 10 service, and our goal is to get you the lowest rate possible. We want you to have an experience of a lifetime. Navigating a turbulent market like this needs to be handled by a real professional. Call Todd Barr at 734-674-6154 and put 20 years of local knowledge to use for you and your family. Success Mortgage Partners Incorporated supports equal housing opportunity. NMLS, member ID number 130562. This is informational only and is not an offer of credit or commitment to lend. Contact Success Mortgage Partners Incorporated to learn more about your eligibility for its mortgage products.
Welcome back to Black Hawk Field. My name is Chad Bush with Lexi Ayala and Sam Stick Day. Cast Tech on top, 13 to seven in this game. It's been two Hodges touchdown rushes of six yards. Brother Rice on the board with their seven points coming uh, by way of their touchdown stick. It, 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 and look, this is a ball game right now that's still in the brink in, 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 in anybody's ball game. We know Cass Tech needs us to get in. Brother Rice is already in. Both teams, though, looking to get this regardless of status at the next level. Yeah, and that's what you love about the competitive nature out of each of these programs. You know, it doesn't matter really what's on the line next week. Pride's on the line this week. You don't want to get punked ever when you step between those lines. And both of these teams have done a good job showing out for each other tonight. But, yeah, we're in for a great second half. And, like I said, I love the unpredictability of it. No doubt. Lexi Ayala is uh, with Brother Rice head coach, Coach Adam Kornischewski. And uh, let's go down now to Lexi, who's on the field with Coach K, and get his thoughts on the first half. Lexi Ayala here with head coach K. Coach, pretty locked down defense the majority of that first half, other than the first minute and the last minute. What happened on those two plays? Well, I mean, they've got some guys. You know, they, we got, we got they, the first play was really bad field position. They had a huge punt return, um, so that's tough on any defense. And then obviously they got some guys, and we got to be better in space, and that's tough to do. And, Coach, how do you continue to make Cass Tech make mistakes and limit your own penalties? Yeah, I, I don't know if we're making to make mistakes, but I, I know what we can focus on is being better in our execution, probably getting the play in a little sooner, which is on me, and um, uh, let's keep this game right where it is and, and see if we can get it down to the final zero with a chance to win. Great. Last thing for you, Coach. What was the message to the team at half after talking to the other coaches? Oh, this is a battle. We know we're in it. All right, we got another half. All right, good luck second half, Coach. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Lexi Ayala. Yeah, Coach K knows. Look, this is they came to play big boy football today. Yep. They came from the Catholic League Central. They weren't going to be intimidated, but they knew they were going to be challenged. And Cast Tech has shown up and, and done some of the things that we expect Cast Tech to do. They've got seniors as well. They've got high major players. Uh, and, and, and they're certainly having more at stake in this game. Yeah, and I like the way Coach K put it. They got guys. Like They got guys. They make plays. That's what their guys do. Yeah. And we've seen it all year for Cast Tech, and that's, that's what happened. They did a great job keeping them in contain the majority of the half. But right before halftime, a guy gets away, you know, able to get the ball down the field on one pass and kind of changes the whole. If they, grow in, if they go up 7-6 into halftime, they have a completely different tone, completely yeah. different measure. But unfortunately, they let a guy do what the guy does, and he got downfield, and now they're playing from behind. But Brother Rice, they're in this game. Cast Tech, you know that locker room was passionate at halftime too, saying, listen, we're only up 13-7 to right now. This is a real game. We got a chance to put them away early here in the third. And the guy that made the big play for Cast Tech was their sophomore wide receiver and a guy that a lot of folks may not know a lot about, Alex Graham. Mark him down. He's got high major offers, Iowa, amongst many others. And uh, he made a fine play down the left sideline. Corey Sadler made the other big play. It's explosive for Cass. It's explosives for Cass Tech that really tells their story and, and tells their fate, you feel like, in this game. Yeah, and that's the tough part about defending them. You never know where it's coming from or who and how it's going to come. You know, is it going to be a big pass play? Is it going to be a Hodges run up the middle? Is Mumfield going to get loose on a quarterback sneak? Like, there's just so many weapons that that team has. It's tough to corral them all for an entire half. Brother Rice did a good job, except those two big bookend plays. And, oh, by the way, it's a double-down opportunity for Cass Tech. They score with 52 seconds left. Rice pretty much runs out the clock, and now Cass Tech gets the football back. I mean, just like that, you could be up two scores when, when moments ago, really, you were, you were down a point. Yeah, and that's why this is a huge drive for Brother Rice right now. They got to come out. They got to set the tone for the second half, and they got to do it on the defensive end right off the bat. Brother Rice, three wins on the year. Cass Tech, four wins on the year. Not something you see these two-story programs with that number, but the scheduling tells the story. For a lot of it, five wins. I beg my part, beg my, beg my pardon for uh, beg your pardon for Cast Tech. Not four wins. Don't want to cheat them out of wins. They deserve them all, no doubt. There's a little pooch left side taken vertically in trouble, and this is going to work out for Rice. It could have been a disaster. Party decided to put it on the plush carpet. 
And the Castec return by the up man, not named Sadler, is the point. And uh, Dejan McCallum, the sophomore. Yeah, and he picks this ball up. He has the forward momentum to the 40-yard line, but he runs about five, six, seven yards backwards. So Brother Rice has to say thank you for that return. Braylon Steven, the junior linebacker with a tackle. So here we go. Seven seconds in, 13 to seven. The Detroit Public School League's Cast Tech technicians looking for win number six and looking to seal the envelope in their fate and get them to the postseason. It's been a six-week fight for them since they started one and three. Mumfield on the right hash. The technicians looking to win their fifth straight. Pitch left side, fake. Kept by Mumfield and he pays for it after a gain of two. Bodies flying all over in orange and black. Rockney Jacobs in the middle of it. And that was a good design play. I like the misdirection. I like the fake pitch to the left, but Mumfield was just not able to get a hole on the right side. Nice pitch to the left. Good lead block right there, but mm -hmm. Brother Rice defense just stout in the middle. Dave Malecki is the uh, offensive coordinator for Cass Tech and the play caller. He's the former head coach at Melvindale High School. This is Corey Sadler in the Wildcat. And this is going to be a false start. The defensive coordinator is Mike Quinlan for Brother Rice. It's interesting to hear the Brother Rice coach, too, talk about getting the plays in because that was something that they had to burn two timeouts in in the first half. So that, that's going to be very important, the speed they get those plays in when they get back on offense. Yes, sir. Hodges cut down in the backfield. That's going to be a loss on the play of a half yard, and that's that stout defensive line getting a little bit stingy up there in the second half stick what's happening well we saw it before the end of the first half both these teams started pushing on each other a little bit more starting to get a little more physical and that's when the big fellas come in look at that number 21 not only showing up as the running back today but coming in and doing his thing then you got eric Stardy doing his thing as well 56 just plugging the gap big time eric doherty guy that's headed to boston college Third and 10 for Cass. Throw left side. This is caught. It's Cassius Shivers, and he's taken down from behind. How about that? All the way from his defensive line position came a hunting Eric Storty. Yeah, we were just talking about him, just mentioning his name. Wow. And he's able to come through like Superman, tracking this guy down from behind. This is, you got to remember, this is a wide receiver he's tracking. Look at, man, like a big bear just tackles him. Well, you can say Rice is playing with house money, but it certainly means something to them. You don't step on the field to lose, man. Back deep. This Mumfield is the punter. You got to watch out here. It's fourth and four. This guy can do things with the football besides punt, and he can also bang it. This is Ben Eck, the midi in lacrosse, and he lets it roll inside the 10. And how about Mr. Mumfield in this punt? Ooh, this is some kind of special. I'm talking Alex Westfall, quarter century birthday party, after hours special. Sylvan Lake, let's go. <laughs> I gotta be up at seven for a breast cancer awareness walk, so you better call my wife on this one. I have to be up at eight for golf. All right, fair, well, all right. Well, different uh, priorities tomorrow, but both yeah. are both very important. You're a better man than I, Chad. Well, oh my goodness. Hey, look at that. Oh. Look oh. at that. Alex Westfall, our executive producer, a quarter of a century old today. Look at that picture. Beautiful. Man, what a gent. No, you keep that up. Forget what's going on yeah, in the we, game. Yeah, never we mind this. on the field, Alex. <laughs> it, it's too bad when the guy with the graphic has to put up his own happy birthday, but sometimes he has to, and he has to put it down. I'm sure he made the graphic, too. That's the best part. <laughs> well, no, we wouldn't do that to him. Delaney Higgins, who does a wonderful job with, with most of our broadcast graphics, um, usually does. But James Ferris, Julia Pisano, who do an amazing job on our creative team. They really do. Stepped in and did that graphic, and they did a wonderful job. 
You don't have to work hard to make Alex look good, but they certainly did. I just want that on a T-shirt. I'm, well, I'm a trying t-shirt. to get some. I'm trying to get you know the free drinks might get me a lot later, so I'm trying to butter them up a little bit. Eight and a half left, second and five, <laughs> short to uh, five yards for Rice, and that's a fine fight and grind at the end. Rice looks to have a little giddy up in this one, and this is uh, the guy who's called with a lot of responsibility today. Vincent Farage, the sophomore running back. And he just runs hard. You see it right there. He will not go down. He puts the one arm on the ground. He keeps it going, keeps moving forward, keeps trucking. And this is what we were talking about, that next man up mentality. And he's put on a show today. Also want to say hello to Pat the Stat, who's not with us tonight. Pat, my dad, going through some medical things this week. And we wish him the best of luck in his recovery. He'll be back with us next week. Get well, Poppy. Run right side, first and 10, and this is a Rice runout. And right now, the will to win is evident in the orange helmet at Vincent Farage. And this is the second run in a row. We're just going to talk about him carrying the pile and carrying the load. He, he's got something to prove tonight. Not only is he going toe-to-toe -to -toe with 55 Thompson on the other end, he's like, give me the ball. I'm just going to run over the whole Cast Tech defense and pick up this first down. Now, we're going to give some credit up front. Oh, yeah. These yeah. are some big uglies that have been highly touted coming in. This is an offensive line that some thought was the best in the state coming into competition. Handoff right side. And I know you're, and, and, and I wasn't saying you were slighting the offensive line, of course. I know you're a big O-line guy. But Petrosante, Charlie at left tackle, his brother Joey at left guard, who's in for Christian Peters, a three-year starter that's been injured. Quadrini at center. Mackley, who's been their best this year at right guard, all Catholic. And Eric's Doherty, the Boston College commit. I mean, this is a formidable front five, and they're a big part of what's happening with the fourth string running back emerging tonight for Rice and Vincent Farage. Yeah, and they're not going up against slouches, too, on that defensive no. line. You're talking about two D1 commits on both ends. The big fellas. Two D1 commits, you're right, and two of the top ten players in the state of Michigan <laughs> in the preseason. All right, timeout on the field. We're going to step aside with 6 and 35 to go in the third. We got a dandy. Rice is on the move. Cast Tech on top. It's win or go home for the technicians. We're coming right back with third quarter action right after this. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate. There he is, Coach Adam Kornachevsky, sixth year head coach, 92 grad of Gross Point North. Played linebacker at Western Michigan. Coach is a grad assistant there. And uh, also had quite a few stops as an assistant. Two stops at Rice as an assistant. Anchor Bay, De La Salle, Seaholm, Renaissance. This is a deep pass down the middle of the field, and it is nearly intercepted, nearly caught. Amongst it all, it's an incomplete pass and a third and eight. And Morogi lives to see another day, but this was dangerous. It was dangerous in a lot of ways. Morogi takes an absolute shot at the end of this. Look at he went low, Sewell. perfect. And then you see throwing into triple coverage, two wide receivers down there too. But yeah, that was pretty much a Hail Mary jump ball at the end. Zach Moore nearly had a chance for it. The initial guy that went up to high point it, Alex Graham had a chance. The 6-1 corner. So third and eight, Orozco will come at the bottom of your screen. Slot left, watch him, it's Ben Eck. Now goes slot right. Wide right is Shannon and Kolka. Throw right side. 90 now. Flag is out. And so's the ball carrier at the 30. It's a holding on Brother Rice. 
it'll be declined, and it'll be fourth down and punting time for the orange and black. They get a look at it. I was wondering if that was a face mask on the, at yeah. the tail end of that, too, the way Thompson was able to drag him to the ground. It wasn't called, so clearly it wasn't. You know, the official was right there. I'm pretty much across the stadium to see it, but it, the way he dragged him down, it looked like there could have been offsetting yeah. penalties on that. I thought so, too. So a good job by Cass Tech. Yeah, great After job. A couple first downs. And what's been part of their best offense? Corey Sadler, yeah. punt return. It goes back deep at about the same point. He returned a 42-yard punt earlier in this game, which set up the game's first score at an 18-yard field for Cass Tech to work with. And this is an end over end. Sadler will catch the ground ball. Dangerous position for Rice. Sadler on the run, cuts back, and down to the 30. 30 yard return, inside the 30. And just like that, the freshman continues to make his mark in the northern suburbs of Oakland County. He's just so special. I mean, it, the ball definitely helped, taking that bounce, that first big hop right there. But you see people try to take angles on him, and they're just not getting that angle of pursuit because he's so much faster than you think he is. That's what you could tell a guy is supremely athletic. You look for it in college. When they're running away from angled defenders, yeah. that's when you know it's special. Fast, and then the vision. Yeah. And the ability just to accelerate so Strength. quickly from your vision. Yeah, it, it's a gift. Now they got a one-on-one -on -one at the top. 6'10 left, throw left side, and dropped. Incomplete pass. It was a forward pass, and Elijah Jordan, who has a couple of catches tonight, just simply dropped it. That was on the money from Mumfield, and it's second down and 10 with 6.06 to go in the third. Yeah, it looked like Brother Rice pretty much had that play sniffed out, but like we said, you never know. Once you get these guys in space, they can make a couple of people miss, and it could have turned into a big play. But Elijah Jordan unable to handle that one from Mumfield. Jordan last week, two catches for 41 yards. And the win over King, 28-14. to 14. The revenge game for Cass Tech, regaining the city, as they said. Second down and 10 from the 31. Up by six points over Rice on the road in a must win. Handoff up the middle. This is the lightly used sophomore Cameron Summonauer. And Summonauer is summoned at the 30 for a gain of just one. It's third and long. It's interesting. Both teams are going deep into their running back the depth chart in this game. Yeah. It, it proves the depth, though. Yeah. I mean, Rice has gone four deep. Cast Tech has gone three deep in this game. Well, you want to get these guys some reps, too, especially if you're Cast Tech. Sure. You know, like we talked about, they're already secured in the playoffs, so why not get some of your underclassmen some reps? That's right. Third down and nine in what could be four down territory for Cast Tech. Play action. Has time. Pocket breaks down, has no more time. Eric Doherty with a sack, but it might be a face mask to boot with the sack, which would give Cass the first down. But Eric Doherty has been a man possessed in this second half, Sam Stick Day. Yeah, he has been a menace breaking through the line of scrimmage. It is a face mask call, so that's going to be an automatic first down, and that's twice in this game where a sack has turned into a first down. Both teams have gifted the other team on third down. Big plays. Personal foul, face mask, pass interference. And that's such a punt, uh, punch to the gut. Oh, it's a five-yard five face mask, so it's still third down and 14. I thought it was Did a they 15 change that in, They changed that in high school football? Okay. Must have. Okay. Was that this year? Did you read the rule book before the season? <laughs> okay. All right. It's been a few years. Okay. Now I feel even worse. All right. Fair enough. Fourth and uh, third and 14. On the 35 yard line. Mumfield in a play action. Looking middle of the field. Nothing home. Pressure. Throws it in zone. Sadler. Touchdown. Technicians. Oh, the improvisation. And the senior Mumfield to the freshman Sadler for six. It was a slow developing play too, but Mumfield has been able to buy time all night long. Rice has had good coverage, but you see there, 
just time after time after time. And it's tough to cover anybody for six seconds, but yeah. Corey Sadler for six seconds, yep. you can't do it. That's you just right. can't. Cast Tech is going to line up for two, and why not? They're up. Of course, this would give them a clean 14-point lead. If they miss, it would be a 12-point lead. So it's a two-possession game, swinging gate coming. And here we go. Running back to the right is Dijon McCallum of Mumfield. Brother Rice not burning a timeout here. Throw left side, caught by a wide open Alex Graham, and the two point is converted. A nice creative play call by Dave Malecki. Gives Cast Tech a clean two touchdown lead in Bloomfield. Yeah, and whenever you see that type of play call, you see that lineup, it's just a numbers game. That's all they're doing. How many people are you putting over the center? How many people are you going to guard the one wide receiver to my right? Okay, I got more linemen than you have to my left. We're going to throw a little screen pass. I got more people than you do. Touchdown. Yeah, you're right. 21 7, 438 left. Cast Tech in the end zone. 30 yard touchdown pass from Mumfield to Corey Sadler. We got an update from the sideline. We did see the running back for Brother Rice go out of the game, Vincent Farage. Their fourth straight running back uh, went down. So they're on the verge of running back number five. Yeah, it looked like he was just cramping on the sideline, though. And, and you know, whenever you are um, whenever you haven't played a ton and you're getting this much run, that's where the lactic acid starts to freeze up your legs and you get those cramps. If you can, get in here. Up the middle, but try to get The here. bounce back for Cass Tech, the first one to score in the second half. Back-to-back -back scores. They closed out the first with a Hodges run. And now the Mumfield to Sadler touchdown pass on an improv third down play. And here come the technicians to boot it away. And it's a fine one that finds the end zone over the head of Max Orozco. So how about that hammer? Off the leg of Mr. Sanchez, the 5'9 sophomore. They really like Marvin Rushing says he might be the best kicker in our program's history. Marvin Rushing, speaking of which, second season, his 19th overall coaching football, his 10th year at Cass, he was an assistant under Thomas Wilcher. He's a graduate of Cass Tech, a darn proud one, class of 93. And he went to Eastern Michigan. He graduated in 98, was a fine linebacker for the Eagles. Uh, and uh, he's currently an executive at Comerica Bank. <laughs> and you could tell by his post-game interview last game saying, we are no longer a 501c3. We do not donate charities anymore. <laughs> like, yep, that's a banker talking. <laughs> Morogi in trouble. And the top defensive lineman in the state says sit down. Yeah, it's tough to get to the edges on Cass Tech. They, <laughs> those two bookends are really, really something special, especially at this high school level. And they're both going to be special at the college level. But my goodness, when big number 55 gets his paws on you, just, just go down. Brother Rice has made a change of the quarterback position. Michael Seigen, the sophomore, has checked into the lineup. And I wonder if it had to do with that big hit he took on that one Hail Mary type play. Yeah. I'm telling you, when he Sewell got hit got him like low. that. Yeah, his, it wasn't dirty, but he it got was him not, low. But his yeah. left leg looked awkward yes, going down. Yes, it did. Down. I agree. Blake Morogi on the sidelines. We'll see what Saigon has. Second and 11. While they take a timeout, we'll take it with them. So with 3 and 53 remaining in the third quarter, it's Catholic League. It's PSL going at it. Come on back, won't you? This is Gridiron Game Day. We're the prep. Thanks for watching.
Ah 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 ah. So Michael Seigen stays, uh, no he does not. This is a double pass, and this is down the middle of the field, looking deep, and it's intercepted! Picked off by Alex Graham! They were looking deep down the middle of the field for Kolka, but it's Graham the other way, and he's finally taken down at the 35, with penalties probably coming up, but it's a pickoff and a turnover, the first created by Castec tonight. And it comes at a critical time here in the third when Wrights was trying to make some money. I like that they're trying to make something happen, though. Like we discussed, it's tough to get to the edges. So you come up with a flea flicker pass. You're hoping to use their athleticism against them. You know, they hope they over pursuit. But double coverage downfield, and this just turns into a jump ball. Number 11, able to grab it easy. And then you're getting some of those cleanup blocks on the return. And that's where the penalty is getting called right there. So the Cast Tech defense. We get the indication. Blindside block. Okay. And just like Brother Rice had that opportunity er earlier and took it, the Cast Tech player did the same thing. Yeah. It's so hard. You've been waiting all game, and when you see a guy just running and you can absolutely light him up, you just do it. It's, it's human nature at this point. Yeah. They're going to get Logan Howell with the penalty for Cast Tech number 68. So that'll back him up. But uh, it's a forced turnover. And credit the Castec defense out of the leadership of that defensive coordinator, Dennis Parker. Longtime defensive coordinator. Mumfield, hands off. Hodges, center of the line, nothing there. Two yards against the stout defensive front in orange and black. Seasonally clad. I know you were excited for the fall. You were you had your sweater on this week. I, I had a nice sweater on. I really liked that. I, I, I was like, wow, that looks really crispy on. I, I got to give a shout out to my mom. She still dresses me. She sent me that as a gift last year. So shout out, mom. Everybody seemed to love the sweater. <laughs> the irony is your mother's in Arizona. She is. Where but no she, one owns a sweater. She's a Michigan gal, though, so she knows oh, sweaters. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. Uh, but, yeah, no, this is this is my time of year. You know, my birthday's in October. West Falls in October. Leaves Wait, are falling. Yeah, you had a, everybody on our crew pretty much is either a uh, Leo, a Virgo, or a Libra, which is very scary. Here's Mumfield in trouble. He's in a tough spot, throws it in the dirt. He got it away in time, no flag. And it'll be third and eight, but this defensive front and Mr. Andrew Labar, the Brown commit, who Coach K really likes, causing havoc there, partner. Yeah, great spin move on Jalen Thompson, too. We talked about him playing both sides of the ball. He's, he's usually a very effective tackle, too, on the offensive end, but a great spin move by DeBar right there. Headed to Brown in the Ivy League. Some felt this is a guy that could play high major ball, but when you get when you get an Ivy League calling, it's it's like you know a clergical calling. Uh, you go. Listen, Ivy League is important. <laughs> yeah. The game of life. You're smart. Mumfield left side. Sadler at the 50 inside. Dragged down after a first down gain. He needed eight. He got ten. Move the chains. A technician. 10 yards first down. And you just feel like they could do this at any time they want. And you wonder why they don't do it more. Corey Sadler sitting out there, single coverage, fake his route, step back, and then just use his speed, break one tackle. Luckily, uh, Ben Eck was able to hold on, and that was a touchdown. Fine blocking out there, stalk block by Elijah Jordan. His wide receiver coach is gonna appreciate that on film. That's Cash Caldwell. Two minutes left. Cast Tech up two scores. They know it's not over, but they know three scores means it might be. Technicians need it to get in. In the final week of this 2022 season, left side, Hodges. Bang down, just shy of the first down. Just feel like Cast Tech is starting to assert their physical will over these guys too. I, I know I've been talking about Thompson a lot, but you see him on the lead block on this. Just clear in house. Watch big number 55 pulling too from a tackle position, able to get out in front of the running back. Normally you pull your guard because it's a little closer to the play, but the tackle position's pulling for these guys. By the way, Lexi Ayala checks in and represents the Capricorns. Okay, what are Capricorns? Is that? Uh... Is it January? I think they're the fish, right? No, that's the Pisces or Pisces. <laughs> that's what my wife is. 
You don't want to be that either. No, <laughs> Second and three. And, and thanks for watching the prep. We R are out. <laughs> RPO play action. Can I sleep on your couch down to the 18-yard line? Not again, Chase. <laughs> I promise it was just the couch. A minute left in the third. And on the run comes Cass Tech inside the 20. You said it, asserting their will. Yeah, you just feel like the physicality of Cass Tech is starting to wear on Brother Rice a little lot. You're seeing a lot of hands on hips on the Brother Rice end, and then you're just seeing this. I mean, Pull. Once again, a, a, that is your right tackle pulling. It's an I, athletic right side. I can't explain how athletic that is for an offensive tackle to be out in front of your running back. Yeah, and they got Thompson, who's very athletic over there with, with their other athletic youngster. Huh. Left side, and how about this? Let's see another look at this. Hodges this time was turned up. Yeah, but it's not about Hodges. It's about big number 55 right there. We've been talking about him all game. Watch him come around, pulling guard. Now watch him just shove this defender to the ground. Ooh. Look at that block. Ouch. That is a block. Get off my lawn. And last week, uh, he had a monster hit on Dante Moore, too, who you know is elusive and hard to hit. Yes, sir. Three quarters are down. Four fingers are up in the air. We got a dandy. Catholic League and PSL banging at it. We're proud to bring it on the prep. Week nine, coming strong to the finish. Come on back, won't you? 21 to 7. The boys from Cass and the Avenue. The Green Guys are up on top. There's just one place where students are students first, and athletics are played with purpose and perspective. That place is your local high school. High school sports offer more than the joy of competition. Studies show that student athletes are also likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in other areas of their lives, including academics. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. Welcome back to The Prep, I'm Lexi Ayala. With about 3.30 left in the third quarter, we see an interception out of Cass Tech side, and all you hear is that entire sideline screaming, celebrating, naturally, of course, right? Not for head coach Marvin Rushing. He immediately turns around, fired up. Not yet, he's screaming. Don't be selfish, don't get excited. This game is not over. It's us against us right now. Let's go. Chad? Yeah, that's right, Lexi. Thank you very much. Doing a great job all season long. Lexi Ayala, part of our crew, a Capricorn, as we learned tonight. And, and, and that's right. I mean, this is the time where you take it seriously. And when you've been playing the last six weeks seriously like this, Stick, uh, it's not too hard to remain focused. Bumpfield back to pass over the middle of the field. In trouble, evades Doherty, dumps down. Hodges in the middle of the field on his feet to the five. And finally taken down. But how about Castex's ability to improvise and make plays? Darty had him dead to rights. Well, you were talking about Marvin Russian before that play, but that's that's a reflection of Marvin Russian right there. Like, we're not getting up. We're not getting down. We're going to play in the moment, and we're going to keep playing every single snap at 100%. And what he's done for this program over the past couple of years is nothing short of phenomenal. The attitude he's bringing that I've seen, because we called him first game of the season. They were not this team. And no, watching them right. now, it's unbelievable how he's coached this team up. They've been focused. Into the lineup for the technicians comes Summonauer. The six-foot sophomore, sophomore to the left of Mumfield. Throw into the end zone, Sadler. And he is P.I.'d pretty severely. Yeah, that jersey ben was Eck. stretching from here to Orchard Lake. Yep. Eck was holding on for dear life, and he's not the only one who's done that this year. It's Mr. Sadler. Sadler nearly caught it anyway. And uh, it's a first down, so reset it. But Castec going in for something serious here. You go up three scores, even with a full quarter of play. Uh, this is a time where Rice really needs to create something. Well, on top of that, Rice hasn't really shown that they can move the ball. You know, their big drive came with multiple big penalties. Shotgun, give up the middle. Into the end zone, touchdown technicians. Cameron Summerow, the sophomore, gives Castec a three touchdown lead in the opening minute of the final quarter. 
And like we said, you know, about midway through the third quarter, you could start to see establishing dominance. And here you go, this close to the goal line, just pushing through, pushing through. And that's what you love. You, that's football, right? You don't want to... You got the athletes to get to the edge, but when it comes time to pick up two yards, put your head down and pick up two yards. Antonio Tate to snap it. The hold is by Mumfield, the block. Sanchez's extra point is blocked. Sam Klein, the senior, all over it. And so we will sit at 27 to seven. Will that matter? We don't know, but we know that this drive for Brother Rice matters quite a bit. Stick, what's happened? They, they started the third with some fire on offense in their first series. We're breaking tackles themselves, making headway. What happened in their uh, offensive pursuit? Well, like you were talking about, they were breaking tackles. Everything they were getting, they were getting it, but it was tough. They had to work for it very hard. And over time, it just kind of wore on them, wore on them, wore on them to the point where we're at now. No doubt want to tell you about our friends at Success Mortgage Partners. In today's ever-changing real estate and mortgage lending world, the importance of a true professional has never been higher. As Success Mortgage Partners, our mission is for every borrower to receive level 10 service, and our goal is to get you the lowest rate possible. We want you to have an experience of a lifetime. Navigating a turbulent market like this needs to be handled by a real professional. Call Todd Barr at 734-674-6154 and put 20 years of local knowledge to use for you and your family. Success Mortgage Partners Incorporated supports equal housing opportunity. NMLS ID number 130562. This is informational only and is not an offer of credit or commitment to lend. Contact Success Mortgage Partners Incorporated to learn more about your eligibility for its mortgage products. Tell you this much, Chad. You say borrowers a lot better than I do. I tried that read three times last week, and I messed up borrowers every single time. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate the broadcast last week. You and Mr. Losey did a fine job. I was watching from afar. Appreciate that double header by you and this crew. And yeah, it's one you got to work on. I stay up at night sometimes. There's an onside kick, and Cass Tech has recovered it. Cass Tech relentless in the fourth. And the old onside catches the orange and black by surprise. And the Avenue boys will keep that pin skin. Yeah, I don't even know if this was an onside. It was just a little pooch that they've been doing all game. And yeah. it took just a, a, a clever bounce. And look at Coach Rushing in the background. Oh, can we please play that back again? you got to watch Coach Rushing. He's got the white hat on in the background. But, yeah, that was just a little pooch. And unfor unfortunately for Brother Rice, the bounce stayed in. But here you go. Don't keep your eye on the ball. Keep your eye on the coach in the background. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rashawn Thornton with a recovery. The senior defensive back. Yeah. Coach Rushing fired up. As always. As always. He wakes up on 10. Yeah. So does Alex Westfall on his birthday. That's right. Where are we headed after this one? I got a couple spots in mind. All right, I want to hear all about it. How about all the past tech celebs? We call them celeb tech. Diana Ross, Big Sean, Jack White. And you look at some of the comedians, Lily Tomlin, David Allen Greer, Carol Ann Marie Gist. I mean, the talent from Cast Tech. Yeah, Big Sean just donated another $10,000 this week to Cast Tech as well for one of their programs. Then you got some pros coming through for football. They're putting them in the league, too. You know, you got Jordan Lewis, you got Michael Anwandu, uh, Donovan Peoples Jones, Lano Hill, uh, Delshawn Phillips, all in the league coming out of Cast Tech. Just such a shining light of Detroit, honestly. Musically, you're talking athletically, you're talking academics. Cast Tech, definitely a highlight of the city of Detroit. No doubt. Proud, proud leaders of the Detroit Public School League in many areas. Extremely high academics, athletics, and everything in between. Hand off right side. The fellow with a touchdown last time down gets it again. And this is a hint into the future with Summer Hour. Just a sophomore, well built at six foot 205, and he looks to be a load. What kind of runner do you think he is? I mean, honestly, I, I'm not comparing him to him, but he's kind of already built like a Donovan Edwards when we were watching him at mm -hmm. West Bloomfield. He's just a big, thick guy, strong, 
But what I've been watching is the one-on-one -on -one matchup between Corey Sadler and Ben Eck on the outside. These two have been going at it all night long. And if you watch them, you can't see them on screen. But if, <laughs> if you get a chance, these yeah. two are battling because they've been in one-on-one -on -one coverage both sides. A couple of fine athletes, one on the back end of their career. At the top end of your screen right now. Mumfield looking the opposite way. Curl route drops. That's Cassius Shivers, and he dropped the curl route. And Vegas say was having none of his frustration after it. It's going to set up third and mid for Cass Tech. I think that's the first time we've seen LaShawn Mumfield unload on a ball today. Look how look at the snap on that ball. Yeah. A little more mustard. It's definitely got to be caught, but man, <laughs> when he wants to put some mustard on it, he does. Yep. A little spicy variety there. Hodges has checked out of this game. This has been uh, all Cameron Summer Hour series. He has uh, located left of Mumfield, gets the call. No, he doesn't. Fake right side. RPO, he's dropped at the 20. They'll be short of the first down. It was a gain of four. They needed two. And I believe Marvin Rushing will have a decision here. Now, you may say there's no decision. You go for it. There is a Brother Rice Warrior down. And uh, this is just something Warrior fans have grown way too accustomed to seeing this year. Yeah, and that was kind of a friendly fire thing on the tackle. It was kind of like a rollover tackle, and he threw him in. See right here, coming in mm, at the end. Oh, yeah. Who is that? Uh, 25, I believe. Yikes. Yeah, friendly fire, right. Either way, it's concerning. No doubt. While they attend to the injury, we'll step aside with 10.07 to go in the fourth. And Cast Tech on top by 20 points. This is Gridiron Game Day. We're the prep. You see that? How you can see every delicious speck of sesame, garlic herb, butter cheese? That is what flavored crust should look like. Crust so irresistible that if pizza could eat pizza, it would be this pizza. Can you imagine how good a pizza would have to be for it to eat itself? Talk about irresistible. Now get an irresistible Howie deal for any budget starting at just $6.99. Hungry? Howie! The injured player being helped off is Ryan Gorsica, the junior tight end. And uh, also comes in at linebacker. It is a fourth down and two for Cass Tech now. And it looks like they will go for it. And they will load that left side. And we'll see if they don't go back to the sophomore tailback. Yeah, or keep an eye on Kamari Anderson, too. He's been kind of quiet today. He's one of the better tight ends in the state. Yeah. He's created some holes. A little bit more of a blocking this Ball game, no doubt. Yeah, I don't think he's been targeted once. Mm -mm. So that's how, that's who I may try to use here. But again, a fourth down and two, and your line is your line putting it in the air now after they didn't get it last time. I think they might try to put it on the ground, and we won't know <laughs> for a minute. Timeout. Well, they got some more time to think about it. I think they wanted to see how the defense was going to align for this. You can tell these kids are strong. Yes, sir. Want to tell you about our friends at Blue Lion Fitness. Get all the best training Ann Arbor has to offer. Ryan Van Bergen and Dan Roth of Blue Lion Fitness. 734-929-5268. Catch them at their facility. Beautiful at 401 South Maple in Ann Arbor. Catch them on the gram at Blue Lion Fitness. And also get them on email, info at bluelionfitness.com. Also want to tell you that, uh, hey, look, you should be a part of our team. Gridiron Game Day, you want to be a part of our sponsorship club, come on in. We're bringing on new sponsors. We've got the winter sports coming. We've got basketball. We've got hockey. We've got the Motor City Cruise coming. So if you would, like us, follow us, subscribe, subscribe to us. We're on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube where you're watching. Now, if you wouldn't mind subscribing for free, we'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. We're The Prep. Alex Westfall, your executive producer. 
My name is Chad Bush alongside Sam Stick Day and Lexi Ayala. Fourth and two for Cast Tech. Play action pass. It is Kamari Anderson, and he's got a first down for Cast Tech to the 13. And my partner is a prophet. His name is Sam Stick Day. Good well, call. You, well, you just saw him pop out of the huddle with a little bit of pep in his step, so I, I felt like they had a play called exactly for him. And on fourth and two, that's almost as good as a run. You're just running him out like that into the flat. Nice, easy two yards every time you want it, if you want it with Kamari Anderson. But thank you, Coach. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and you, it's a guy that you want to get involved, as you said. I mean, you're going to need all your... All your players to have a little bit of action and some run. There's another player down for Brother Rice. You're it. Hey, and you're uh, it, this one, uh, Andrew Cordini, who's the center, who's down. I believe on that turf. Boy, this turf, what's going on with the turf? Are any turf monsters out there? Did you ever get tripped up on the turf when you had a open touchdown run when you were playing or anything like that? You know, <laughs> I missed a lot of open layups in basketball. I never tripped. If I ran in a touchdown backwards for 15 yards. Oh, there you go. I know Park Cabrini's homecoming. Yeah, I never tripped on the turf, but I did fall when I got a walk in baseball once, and that was embarrassing. Well, yeah. that's, that is embarrassing. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Nowadays, these guys, you know, want to sprint down to first. Yep, my feet got tangled up, and I bit dirt about halfway down the first baseline. I've done that trying to steal the base <laughs> from first to second yep. and completely fell down and had, got thrown. Yes. So here we go. Watch the top of the screen. Top of the screen is a matchup between Mr. Sadler and Mr. Zaweda. Take a look up there. First and ten. Summer Hour gets the call up the middle. And behind that big, bulky offensive line that's been so good tonight, you got Canty, O'Brien, Washington, Walker, and Thompson. They've got two freshmen on that line stick, and you wouldn't even know it. No, they've played big all night long, and you know we were talking during halftime just how impressive it is that you can pull your tackle. You know, that pulling a guard is tough enough. Sometimes your fullback isn't fast enough to get out in front of your tailback, but if you got a tackle coming all the way from the right to the left, lead blocking, it's tough to account for that for a defense. Yeah, it is. Khalif Canty is a freshman left tackle, and uh, Jelani Walker is a freshman right guard. Second down and eight from the 11 with eight minutes left. Mump, free looking in zone in the corner, Sadler. Touchdown, Cast Tech. Mump field to Sadler. No, that's Sewell again. And that's Javen Sewell in the end zone with almost a carbon copy catch of the touchdown he started the year with in week one against Southfield. Javen Sewell, the Central Michigan commit with a touchdown catch of 10 yards. Yeah, and I was gonna say, if it's a diving catch, it's definitely Javen Sewell coming in, and look at this, you're right, this is almost identical, except he was in the front of the end zone yeah. last time. But look at that, over the shoulder, my goodness. Willie Mays Hayes, we called it earlier. Yep. Oh man, how about the throw by Mumfield? Not too shabby either. No, it's got to be nice, though, for Mumfield to drop back in the pocket and know that all I got to do is just kind of throw it out there. My wide receiver can run under it because we got that speed. Yep, no doubt. Extra point coming up. This has turned into a route. It has. 33 points now for Cass Tech. Rice is in the playoffs regardless. Cass needed to win, and they have shown desperation and precision in this second half. Not only that, they've shown that grit. They've shown that they've just shown it all. And this is a continuation of last week and what their coach was talking about. Like last week was a statement. We're here. This week is a follow up statement. Like you better bring it if you're playing Cast Tech, especially going into the playoffs because they are catching their stride. Sure are. This is the fourth meeting all time. Rice leads the series two to one. This will be tied up. Teams have not played since 2012. It's been 10 years and too long, if you ask me. It's been since the 24th of August, 2012. Here comes the extra point attempt by Sanchez. Not yet. Guess what? Another penalty. <laughs> and we're prolonging the uh, VIP table tonight for Alex Westfall at the local Moose Preserve. Oh, we're going to the Moose Preserve? We're getting cookies? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Schwartz, you're coming this time. Quit laughing. You missed last time. Yeah, you're you, required. You missed my birthday, man. Requirement tonight. I will call Casey right now. I don't care. Here comes Sanchez to attempt a PAT of 30 yards. Mumfield to hold it. And that is blocked. Another block by this Rice. And that one was blocked by Jack Flurry. His papa was in the booth earlier. He was right next to you. Oh, yeah. Very proud. Proud Papa plays a little baseball himself. Okay, we'll take a timeout. Cast Tech is in the end zone and making a statement tonight in Bloomfield in the second half. They said they were the city's best last week. Tonight, they're backing that up. game of desire and will. Four quarters of epic drama that plays out in real time right before our very eyes. And every season begins the same way, with a desire to win. Those with the will to put in the effort and time put themselves in the best position to achieve their desire. This is why we go to work early and come home late. Why we go so hard and why we put in all these hours. Because we have a desire to be great and the will to become everything we dreamed of and more. So when the drama's thick, when it comes down to just those few precious... The technicians are in the end zone for the fifth time tonight. And with just about eight minutes left, Sam Stick Day looks like they've pulled away. In a game that we thought was nip and tuck uh, into about the mid part of the third quarter, Cass has gone on some kind of a run. Three unanswered touchdowns. Yeah, I mean, really, it was a very close game up until the, what, one minute left in the second quarter. Then Cass Tech gets that go-ahead. They get the kickoff at halftime, and they were able to just extend the lead from there. And Cass Tech, they're, they're just... They're into this game. You see the energy on the sideline. You see the kids getting fired up. And you can see when they run out on the field, it's with purpose right now. And now if you're Brother Rice, I mean, how much are you thinking about next week? You're staying healthy. That's all you want to yeah, do. You want right. to get out of this game healthy. That's all you want to do if you're Brother Rice at this point. Yeah. Morogi under center. Handoff right side. Back into the game comes the sophomore, Vincent Farich. Gets a few yards off the right side. Actually gets more than a few. He gets six. I'll tell you, the future is bright with Farish at running back for Brother Rice. I mean, he has come out here and run hard against a very physical team that we've been talking about all game long. And he's been driving back the pile. Yep. Finds some hole up. Finds a hole up the middle, then takes a smack down at the four. And... Uh, Wow, Mr. Okay. Shivers. <laughs> was that Shivers or Baker? That My goodness. Number four, Baker Shivers. Okay. Woo. Appropriately enough. Yeah. Oof. With the Rice turning out the ground the yards here. Flag on the play. Flag down. Initial we'll see that again. Is Shivers hit? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure we will. But not only that, it, you're starting to wonder, Brother Rice is coming in with the up-tempo offense right now. And this kind of would have solved some of their issues earlier in the game with getting the play call in and getting some tempo going, you know? Pressure off, too, and it's now a four-score game. Tech. has a lot to do with that, too. Mm -hmm. that penalty is declined. Things start to open up. The result of the play is a yeah, you just always game. hate to like look back Second and say, and man, we should have tried this. Yep, no doubt. Rice trying that right side again, and that's a f tackle and a trip up at the 45-yard line, an awkward landing. Flag on the tackle made by N Matthew Nickens, the free safety, and the senior committed to Grand Valley. What do we have here, sir? Looks like in the spot of a holding call. Whole right side collapse nicely. During the run. 
holding for the rice. Indeed it is. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the So ball. next week is week Three one of the plays. playoffs. Where First are we going? Down, You're probably gonna ask. Well, we know that we're going to do the PSL Volleyball Championship. Beautiful. We know that's, we know that's solidified. Will there be a second crew? Will there be a football crew? We're capable, we're willing, we're able, we're able. <laughs> Who wants it? We're a free agent next week. Right side, Eck dies for the first down. One, Just short. He's been quiet tonight. Number six, he's had a big assignment on the other side of the football where he's counted on. So big games next week. Where will Cass Tech be? Where will Brother Rice be? Well, we know this. Cass Tech is on a collision course. To beat Dearborn in week one. Okay, I'll say it. They beat Dearborn in week one. I'll, we'll assume that. They're favored on Goose Poop. We'll blame it on Goose Poop. Week two, they're set up. If Southfield a and wins their game, the oh. district championship is set up. So we get another big run, another body blow by Shivers, this time unsuccessful. <laughs> he knew it was coming this time. Finally rode down by Derek Jackson the third, the sophomore. So this is this is what's set up for week two. Southfield a and and Cass Tech for the district championship week two playoffs. My goodness, and the first version of that game was epic. How about the second version? And the second half, yeah. <laughs> the, it was two halves separated by a day. It would almost feel like three games. And it feels like it's a game we should do, but that's week two of the playoffs. Um, both teams have to get by, but our favor. We'll talk about Brother Rice's fate when we come back and who they're scheduled to play. All that and much, much more coming up. 537 left. This is week nine, Gridiron Game Day. Thanks for watching. We're the prep. Cast Tech in control in the final quarter. Hi, folks. Dr. Joe here again with Michigan Orthopedic Surgeons. Everywhere you look this time of year, people are running. And that's a great thing because running is an excellent exercise especially for your cardiovascular and musculoskeletal systems. But the question is, are you running a safe running program? All too often, people are hobbled by things like shin splints and patellar tendonitis. But luckily, simple things like stretching and warm up, the right running shoes, and realistic weekly mileages can keep you in your running game. For more information, go to miorthosurgeons.com. All right, welcome back. 5.37 to go. Lexi Ayala and Sam Stick Day alongside Chad Bush. Second and seven for Rice, 5.30 left. And we've got a false start. So we look at the playoff bracket, assuming Brother Rice does lose this ball game as they are down by four scores. And Stick, they're slated and predicted right now to play. Second and two. Sorry. Uh, Gross Point North. Ooh, Coach K's alma mater in round one. That's the uh, prediction there. Now, Gross Point North is undefeated. They're 9 0. They beat their rival South tonight. Handoff right side. This is Vegas Say. There's a face mask. And it was a first down anyway, but they'll add on five or 15. So here's the bracket. Brother Rice will advance and play North. Now the winner, assuming Rice wins that, and, and no one's saying that that's a gimme by any means, they would take on the winner of Avondale and St. Clair Shores Lakeshore. Let's say they get by that. It sets up a wide open 
Lane to take on Wall Lake Western. If Western can get by Holly and Western can get by the winner of Linden and Fenton, which they'll be highly predicted to do. And it sets up a Wall Lake Western and Brother Rice district final. And we called Wall Lake Western earlier this season. They're, they're a strong team. And they sure are. First and 10 on the 12. Morogi hands off right side. Evading a missed tackle. Farrich gets uh, just a couple. It's so tough. Farrich, you know, we've been talking a lot about Sadler and how young he is and how hard it is to take him down for Cast Tech. Farrich is very similar as a sophomore. He has not gone down once with the first hit. Yeah, and his first real action on varsity is against Cass Tech. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's baptism by fire, man. You're not lying. It, it's going to get easier from here, young man, I tell you. Yeah. Morogi. So they'll realign their tight end, Nolan Shannon. Shannon name it. Rice has been there for a while. Hand off right side again. It's Farich, and he fights inside the five to the four. And it sets up a third and short. Jeremy Christian with a tackle for Cast Tech. So you got third and short. You know, this is four down territory. So pretty much any play in the playbook is open. Maybe try a little bit of misdirection or a play action pass or something like that because you know you're going to be going for it on fourth down. Big number 81 stretching out top. It's Connor Monroe at 6'6", 185, a tall drink of water. Man, give me a jump ball. Morogi handoff up the middle, spin into the end zone, touchdown Vincent Farich. The sophomore wanted the pill and deserved the end zone tonight. Touchdown, Brother Rice. Yeah, and that's it right there. Why not feed the horse that got you there, right? He's been running hard all game. Let him get that taste of an end zone here at the, the varsity level in high school. But there you go. Nice spin move in the hole, and we talked about it. The first man's not bringing him down. So he's able to shake one tackler and get into the end zone for an easy touchdown. Extra point attempt coming up. This is Owen Party, the senior. And the kick is up and good. Shivers came in aggressively. The hold by Parent, and the kick's good. So 33 to 14, Rice gets in the end zone, 313 left. Got a flag, maybe, maybe a little bit of chirping. We'll find out what the official has to say. They'll mark it off most likely on the uh, roughing yep. the kicker. They'll mark it on the kickoff. The so personal foul, roughing the kicker. So we also update the Cast Tech prediction. By the way, this is all via Goose Poop. One of my favorite new sites. <laughs> you just like saying it. I, I I do. I like saying it, but I like. Reading what they're providing us. They are actually now adjusting this. So it would be Cass Tech and Southfield A&T in round one. Oh, my. Dearborn and Troy on the other side of the bracket in round one. So this is a collision course for week one. And I don't know how <laughs> we don't belong in that game. <laughs> I... If we're not doing the game, I'm going to that game, and I'm calling it to myself on the side. Well, now, wait a minute. We might need you. <laughs> no, but, I'm yeah. talking I, I, I just need to watch those two schools play football again. Marshall, yeah. the quarterback, and Sadler to go at it again. Man. The other predictions in Division I uh, on this side of the state, Dakota and Eisenhower, who I think already played, Chippewa and Romeo, so all those teams in the same league, the Mac Red, Adams and Rochester, Stony Creek and Lake Orion. Lapeer against Clarkston. Davison against Grand Blanc. Again, all these are just projected, but I'll tell you what, these are pretty uh, pretty well calculated. Yeah, I love that they're updating them real time, too. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Party to onside it. And it's not going to go the required 10 yards to recover. So, Cast Tech will take over with 3.13 left, leading 33 to 14. Don't forget after the game, Lexi Ayala will talk to our G's of the game. 
And we look forward to finding out who that is. I feel like every time we do a Cast Tech game, it's Corey Sadler, but what else can you do? The kid starts out the game with a 42-yard punt return. He catches touchdowns. He's playing on the defensive end. Be hard not to include him. <laughs> so many good players for Cast Tech. Really are. Both teams will have some steam heading into the playoffs. Despite the fact Rice will be coming off a loss. Anytime you get in at three losses, I mean, you got to feel this is the first time in obviously state history a team with three losses has gotten in. And three wins. Three wins, excuse me. Yeah. And, and, and so you have to feel like fate's on your side at that point, too. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting, you know, because three wins should not get you into the playoffs. But if you're looking at the strength of schedule and you're measuring it against one to one, they've earned it. They, the teams that they've beaten have given them enough clout to get into the playoffs, and that's important. So now, like, now the state of Michigan has to kind of reevaluate. It's more about who you beat than how many you beat. Yeah. That's right, and that's been the focus this year, and I'm sure the MHSA has heard about it from some teams, and not from the Catholic League. They have benefited from the strength of schedule being a big part of it. Yeah, where, where it hurts is like, you know, PSL. The, the PSL, it hurts teams like that, and like the up north teams as yep. well, when, you know, there may be one dominant school in an entire county, and they're never gonna be able to play great teams. Yeah, Brother Rice started the year with a 21 to seven loss against Dakota. By the way, Dakota, how good have they become? Right. Top five team in the state overall, perhaps. East Kentwood, they lost by a couple points, too. Woodhaven, a 26-0 win for Rice in week three. And their biggest win of the year came in week four against who some think is still the best team in the state, Warren De LaSalle. Rice went down there in Detroit in Midtown and beat them 43-42. to the following week was against their rival, Detroit Catholic Central. That was a narrow loss, 21 to 19. They only had Nolan Ray for about 10 carries in that game. And then the loss to St. Mary's, which for Rice was kind of a stinker for them. Coach K said, look, our first half, our defense really let us down. But St. Mary's won a close game, 15 to seven. A bye week after that was very timely for Rice. And they came back last week and wall up their rival from Losser down the street, Detroit Country Day, 28 to six. Here they are against Cast Tech. It looks like they'll take an L into the playoffs, but stick a lot to play for in new life in Division Three. Yeah, it's a whole new season, right? Once you get into the playoffs, it really doesn't matter what you did in the regular season. <laughs> it's one game at a time, hit the man in front of you and keep going. That's right. It's been an amazing run since Brother Rice. Since 1999, they've only missed the playoffs once. Yeah. 2015. They went two and seven that year. Had some good lineage too, runs with like the Goble brothers, the Pickens oh. brothers, all those guys. Because that's that was You're back when I was playing. Then past that, you know, just a great program that Brother Rice has. And even as a St. Mary's alum, I can acknowledge that. Sure. He is one of your good friends being a Brother Rice guy. Yeah. Good. And I don't hold that against him. I love Joe. <laughs> Joey Radio. <laughs> Meanwhile, Cass Tech season, as we wind down in the final minutes, started against Southfield as we talked about in that legendary game that was a two-part affair. Game part one on Thursday, part two on Saturday. All in all, it was 110 points and a two-point loss for Cass Tech on the road. They had to go to Indiana to play one of the best teams in the state of Indiana in Carmel. They lost by two touchdowns. Came back and beat Renaissance 66 to nothing, and then lost to King. And they were looking at a one and three start at Cass Tech. That's really not what they do. But they'd come back, they'd shut out Western, they'd shut out Mumford, and then East English Village was next. And then the redemption against King last week, 28 to 14, and now the full recovery and the entry into the playoffs at 33 to 14 winners over Brother Rice. Cass Tech has turned it around, and they finish it tonight, Stick. That is not a team I want to play first round of the playoffs. It's not a team I want to play in the playoffs at all. We've been able to call them the last two weeks, and they are a team on a mission. They're a team that plays with anger and intensity, and they hurt you. Yep. And 
in the, the best way possible that football should be done, right? They do it in a clean way. They hit you hard. But, my goodness, this program is turning into something special right before our eyes. It sure is. All right. Both these prize programs have completed their regular season. The playoffs are next for both. Our Lexi Ayala will sit down and talk to our G's of the game and the head coach, Marvin Rushing, for Cast Tech right after this. You're watching Gridiron Game Day. Week 9 has concluded. Thanks for watching all season long. Don't go away now. 33-14, to 14, your final score, Cast Tech over Brother Rice. We begin with your dream, your drive, your grit, the heart and vision of every member of your team. We take it all, and from those threads of greatness, we weave a uniform of a champion. In many ways, our sport is just like yours. We've brought together a team of elite designers. We've put in the time and the sweat, perfecting our craft over 14 years. We've outfitted thousands of teams for thousands of victories, approaching each new project, each new game, like it's the only one we'll ever play. And let's be honest, we've done it all with a quality so unmatched that some can't help but call it perfection. You know, it's more than just a shirt. Look like a champion, play like a champion. A champion powered by the G. Hashtag G Brand USA. G Brand USA. Elite design, unmatched quality, American pride. We're proudly made in the USA. You see that? How you can see every delicious speck of sesame, garlic herb, butter cheese? That is what flavored crust should look like. Crust so irresistible that if pizza could eat pizza, it would be this pizza. Can you imagine how good a pizza would have to be for it to eat itself? Talk about irresistible. Now get an irresistible Howie deal for any budget starting at just $6.99. Hungry? Howie's! Hi folks, Dr. Joe here again with Michigan Orthopedic Surgeons. Did you know that kids are not little adults when it comes to sports injuries? That's because of something called the growth plate. Growth plates exist all over the human body in our growing athletes. They're actually little cartilage discs that exist at the end of all the long bones. It's simply where a kid grows. The problem is that the growth plate can be the weak link. What might be a sprain, a strain, or a tear in an adult when they hurt themselves can actually be a growth plate fracture in a kid. So it's important if your kid has hurt themselves and they're not using their arm or they're not able to put weight on a leg, come see one of us, get an x-ray, and make sure it's not a growth plate fracture. For more information, go to miorthosurgeons.com. Welcome back to Blackhawk Field. My name is Chad Bush alongside Sam Stick Day, Lexi Ayala, our field analyst. And uh, we're 
proud to bring you the finale. Week nine, it's kind of sad. It's Gridiron Game Day Week nine uh, stick. But look, we saw some great action tonight. 33 uh, points put up, 33 to 14. The final score. Hey, look, Cast Tech and Brother Rice, it, this thing was really tight through one quarter. Uh, really game almost started to change. Yeah, yeah, the first half. Just a different first half than second half. Was that strictly just sense of urgency, do you feel? Uh, you know, sometimes teams just feel each other out and try to understand what they can do to each other. And then eventually I think Cass take it, figured out that, hey, we just we just need to play bully ball right now. Yeah. <laughs> we just need to keep running at these guys. And when they did that, it opened up everything for them. All right, let's take a look at the highlights, partner, and uh, look at what happened early. No surprise here, the freshman got busy. Yeah, Corey Sadler, I mean, we, we've said enough about him this game, and this is what he does. You get him the ball no matter where it is on the field, he's going to make you hurt for it. And then you get Hodges here breaking and getting on into the end zone for the early touchdown, putting Cast Tech up 6 nothing. Hodges once again gets in the end zone. This was to put Cast Tech up 13 to seven. And then Corey Sadler, once again, another there punt return. Yeah, 30 yard punt return right there. And then you see um, Marshawn getting, a, or Mumphrey getting around. And once again, Sadler finding him wide open in the end zone. This was a two point conversion play, the old swinging ladder. And that, that's how it went uh, to Mr. Alex Graham for the touchdown. He had an interception earlier in the game. And this guy, what more can you say about big number 55, man? <laughs> Thompson is all over the place. And then this was the big interception once again that I was talking about earlier by Alex Graham. He was able to return this. Got called back from that blindside block right there, but a turnover nonetheless. And then you see the sophomore for Cast Tech getting on into the end zone there. And Cast Tech just kept piling it on, piling it on, piling it on. And then here it is, the diving catch. Once again, Javen Sewell, he started off the season with a diving over-the-shoulder catch. He ended the season with a diving over-the-shoulder catch. But overall, what a great performance by Cass Tech throughout this entire game. A little shaky early in the first half, but after that, these boys came to play. They're going to go home tonight feeling good. And the game started an hour early, so it's only 8.30. They got a big Friday night heading in Detroit. Five wins in a row, partner. For Cast Tech, the technicians after starting one and three. And Lexi Ayala is down on the field with a trio of stars in this game, our G's of the game. Lexi Ayala, what is going on with the green guys down there? Take it away. All right, Lexi Ayala back with the G's of the game here. We got Sadler, I would give you a hat, but you already have two. So we're going to give it to Sewell, and we got Nick. Amazing game from all of you. First, I want to hear from Coach. Coach, of course, this one you needed to win to get into playoffs, but this game was bigger than that. Tell me about who this game was dedicated to. Well, first and foremost, I want to thank my kids because it was a tough week. Everybody doubted them. They talked about what they weren't. Um, they didn't believe in them anymore. And then once you had the success you had last week and then have everybody jump back on the wagon, it was tough for them to deal with that. It was a tough week of practice. The focus wasn't quite there, but we found a way to will it. And I'll be honest, that's a tribute to this young man right here. This young man right here has been through a lot. Mother passed away from breast cancer. We met up a couple weeks ago at the Making Strides for Breast Cancer Walk. This game was dedicated to Matt Nickens' mom. He's, he's, he embodies Cast Tech. He's a technician. Hell of a student, hell of a player, and a hell of a young man. I'm so proud of him, and our team is proud of him. And, Nick, I mean, there's a lot of emotion, I'm sure, in your own head going on for this game. How are you able to contain it and just put it all on the field? Um, so just coming out here on the field, you know, Football is an outlet for me, so I come out here, you know, put all my emotions into here. You know, being out here with my brothers every day, you know, it really helps me. So, And all three of you play on the defensive end. Tell me what you're most proud of of the defensive effort tonight. Uh, we was disciplined. Going into the week, we knew we were going to have to be disciplined and focus on our keys, you know what I'm saying, our gaps, make sure the DBs stay disciplined. They like to, you know, delay tight ends. And tackle, that's a really big thing, being physical. We know the team casually, they always known for being physicality. So just being physical and, you know, do what we had to do, take care of business on the field. And Sadler, like I said, you've already received two G of the game hats. So tell me about how you're able to play so consistent. Um, it's a blessing, you know, from God, you know. I just got to thank my brothers and my teammates for putting me in the right position to make plays and make tackles and everything, you know, and be successful in life. You know, I want that Coach Rush and the coaching staff for just helping me out, you know, being there for me, giving me in the school, everything, you know. So I just want to thank them and everybody else. 
And from a senior standpoint, standpoint, so I want to ask you, I know that Brother Rice's head coach thought that they would be ex able to exploit your O-line from some of those younger players. How do you, how are you able to explain the maturity and the confidence that trickles down from the senior leadership down to your younger guys? Uh, we knew coming in, we was going to have to establish, you know what I'm saying, a good leadership just coming in from last year. So we just try to focus on, you know, mentoring our guys because we knew they was young. You know what I'm saying? Getting them, easing them into the high school life and, you know, how you're supposed to do things. And they kind of caught on quick. It was a couple bumps in the road, but, you know, we got those set it up. And we just, all all of us just had that chemistry together. Once we got into Brother Rice game and they was able to execute with poise, you know what I'm saying, do what a coach was telling us to do and play together. And, Nick, from your team getting interceptions, touchdowns, I mean, all cylinders, what got it clicking? Um... This guy right here, you know, one-on-one -on -one dog, you know. So just yeah, yeah, yeah. Coach Rush just brings that energy to the team when we down. So big shout-out to Coach Rush. Coach, yeah. I mean, you stay fired up on the sidelines. Passionate is no question about your character. And, Coach, you told me last game that against King that you knew that game was going to be won before the game even started. When at this point did you know this game would be won? Well, to be honest, we knew earlier in the week, probably about Wednesday when we started to calm down and stop feeling ourselves all week. Well, we were smelling ourselves a little bit. Our heads were probably somewhere they needed to be. But let me do this. Let me shout out Brother Rice, their administration, their coaching staff. They called us last, this summer looking to play this game. I struggled to find games. They came to us. I respect them. You know, it's, it, it, I can't say enough about Coach Adam his staff, and the type of men they have and the, the fact that they would play us because it's, it's a struggle for us to find games. And last thing for you, Coach, does Cast Tech still run the city? Well, you know, when I said that, it, it, I know a lot of people took it as just on the field, but I'm a Cast technician. When you go to Cast Tech, the expectation is to be a leader in our society. So when I say Cast Tech run the cities, I, it, it doubled down on the field, but it really was more about what we're going to do after we graduate and what we do down the road to build the city and build other people. So that's why Cast Tech runs the city. We have great men, great women, and we are expected to be leaders. It's the character. It's the integrity. These are your G's of the game. Cast Tech with a big one tonight. Chad, back to you. Excellent work <laughs> tonight, all season long. Lexi Ayala on the microphone working it. With uh, head coach Marvin Rushing, second year head coach. I want to hang out with Marvin Rushing. Like, yeah, I don't care a, what we're doing. Uh, I just want to hang out with him. Intense, but seems like he could be a lot of fun after uh, you know the, the collar comes down. Well, but he's intense, well, and, I, and I appreciate that. And there's some coaches who are intense, and they can't understand when to be put your arm around a shoulder guy too, right? Yeah, and you look at that. And you see that they're literally walking off the field arm in arm right now. You're going to see him come onto the screen right now. And there they go. But that's what—that's exactly what I was talking about without prompting them to do that. Yeah. He's a guy. He's intense. He's going to work you hard in practice. He realized, hey, we beat King. We were kind of feeling ourselves during the week. But, no, we got to stay on point. And he did it. And then he's able to still be the man that his kids need as well and a father figure to all these young men growing up. And I loved his comments doubling down. Yeah, we did say we were Detroit. We did say we were running Detroit on the football field. But it's not only there, it's in life, too. So congratulations to Cast Tech. Amazing program, amazing coach, great game. Yeah, you feel good about a comeback like this. And you start the season one and three, Cast Tech, and, and, and look, it's up to the head coach at the end of the day to get him back. And there's a lot of responsibility on him. Look, he'll tell you, nothing's happened yet. Like Cast Tech, you expect to win double digits. He didn't do that last year. He's not going to do that this year. Yeah. So, I mean, there's things ahead for him. And, and King has done some things already. He has yet to do some things, but with what he's had in his two years, he certainly looks to be the man that was picked in charge to replace Thomas Wiltshire. Looks like they're in good hands with Marvin Rushing, who will start his playoffs next week on a Friday, potentially against the team he opened this season with. Amazing. Southfield a and It could be the rematch, 56-54 in a wild game that we called uh, earlier this year. Well, all I know is I don't play for Marvin Rushing, but I would run through a wall for Marvin Rushing. That's all I know right now. No doubt. want to thank our great crew for making this broadcast possible on this great quarter of a century celebration. Alex Westfall, baby! With Alex Westfall's life. We couldn't do without Alex. He is the leader of this company. Make no mistake about it. We appreciate you, Alex. Thank you very much, sir. Special thanks to the entire crew for working hard on this week nine Friday night. 
Chase Kaufman, your technical director tonight. Matt Schwartz on instant replay. Evan Westfall on graphics. CP back in the house on audio. Craig Patterson. Camera one is run by Rob Zarna, or Rob Sarna, rather. Kyle Buchanan on camera two. Adam Fuller back home on Blackhawk Field, along with Brandon Nager on camera three and four. Sam Fisher on the parabola, Fish. the field mic. Chris Rose on the field run in that gimbal. Creative director, James Ferris. Creative assistant, Julia Passano. My partner is Sam Stick Day. My name is Chad Bush, and for Lexi Ayala, your field analyst, it's time to say goodnight from Blackhawk Field and Bloomfield Hills. One more time, your final score, Cast Tech 33, Brother Rice 14. Where are we headed next week? You tell us. Who wants it? We got it. Thanks for watching. We're the prep. So long, everybody.